All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Answer the Call. Uh, I want to give you a little intro to all this, but I think the, the topic is very self-explanatory. Attacking, defending, running in the new flight model, like what combat and uh, piracy and all these things may be like. But it all came from, uh, I think I was watching something with the, the flight model and Avenger 1 was in my channel. And I was talking about like how I didn't feel like you can run with this possibly. It, it might be something that could be really problematic. Then he made a video and I reacted to it and I didn't think it kind of explained the the issues that I had with it, but also brought up some other ideas. We we're going to have Avenger 1 on. He couldn't make it. And I wanted to bring a big group, huge roundtable of different perspectives where I would be the perspective of the kind of casual player, the person who might be a miner or cargo hauler. And we have pirates. We have PKers, we have PVPers, we have kind of everybody from the the whole group of everything. So I tried to to cover all my bases as best I could. So without further ado, we have Agent Sleddy, Virgil, Hello. and Jonathan Winters. So um I guess we'll start out. You guys should introduce yourselves. So uh we'll start with agents. What who are you? What do you do in Star Citizen? And uh, like, kind of maybe why? Why would you be on a show like this? You think? Um, hi, I'm Agents Letty. I'm the leader of Mongol Squad. Uh, we're a pirate organization, uh, very active in the game at the moment. And uh, the reason why I would be called into this particular topic is because the new flight model is going to be presenting a lot of uh, opportunities for us to uh, enact more piracy on players and uh, it's going to change uh, the dynamic between predator and prey with piracy gameplay. Yeah, for sure. I mean, even more recently, just seeing the way... Uh, like I've been watching the videos and it's way it's already becoming way less of let's hold them up for money and more just like boarding and taking. And it's like our it's already starting to change, which is very exciting. Uh, I guess we'll go around in a circle. So, Jonathan, who are you? What are you doing, Star Citizen? And, and why might you be here on today's show? What's up, peeps? Um, so I do PVP mostly and mostly what I do is teach people. Um, I've been around for a very long while. Uh, I played with Angels of the Warp. Uh, I was in Black Fleet, and I currently play every now and then with Liberty Reapers. Um, so, yeah, that's what I do. And those are all what would be considered what, just like other PvP orgs? Those, I, those I, are I obviously the top, know them, but yeah. Yeah, those are the top of the top. I mean, Liberty's is probably the best PvP org right now, hands down. Um, oh, don't throw that at me. <laughs> Oh, Holy you would shit. you would not win, I promise you. There's, oh no. There's Black Fleet, which was the top of the tier back in the day, and Angels of the Warp was also the top back in the day. So I guess I, I, I should have those orgs, by the way. So I guess I'm aware. I, should, I guess I shouldn't have brought Virgil on then because he's not a uh, part of a top um, PvP org. So um, well, there's uh, here's, here's the thing. Virgil Virgil is from Shadow Moses, which is an incredible PvP org. I'm not going to lie. Uh, but they have numbers. They have a lot of people. They have a lot of great pilots in there that I personally know, Goliath, Naz. But if we were to do like an organized 10 versus 10, I'd give it to Liberty Reapers every single time. Yeah, okay. I'd... All right. Now, I will start out with this. That has nothing to do with today's topic. So we'll, yeah. we'll yeah. kind of... <laughs> yeah. we'll, I'll, I'll allow Virgil <laughs> to respond because it would only be fair, but we'll we'll leave that part of the conversation right here after this. Um, Virgil, why yeah, would that... you be on today's show, and and who are you, and what do you do? Uh, oh, Cutler, welcome um, too. <laughs> yeah, so um, I don't know. I um, I like to think I'm pretty rehearsed in the flight model, and you know, you and me have done podcasts before. Um, yeah based off of flight and all that jazz a lot. So um, just the natural progression of it. We, you and me have been waiting for this for a long time. And um, and yeah. And, uh, um, Casual PvP. I run. Work. Yeah, exactly. You know, definitely. Um, I'm not even going to go there. I'm, I'm going to keep it. <laughs> nah, we're good. But okay. those, those guys suck. But yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, 
so I will be looking at my phone occasionally. It's because uh, we do all this stuff on Discord, and if I open my Discord, it would cover these guys' cameras. So I have all my notes from what we what we were going to talk about. I'm on the show because it's my show, but it's also I think my concerns are uh, the casual player, and I've played both the kind of more i don't want to use ca the word casual because it's got a negative connotation but the minor the cargo hauler somebody who's not really interested in getting involved in in pvp and a lot of their day-to-day -day operations in the game right they're they're actively trying to avoid it and when the new flight model came out it was kind of like uh oh um is is this kind of changing the balance in a way where uh it's not going to work out for that player like um I am the I am of and and have always been of the idea that piracy is super important. I want as a a a I guess industry player would be what you would call it. You need to have that risk and reward and that risk cannot come from NPCs exclusively. It it has to be player interaction. It has to be um that that level of of fear it, it can't just be the death of a spaceman from a, a a tough npc that you're fighting right so there's going to be that like i don't i'm not going to be in that kind of care bear category i absolutely believe pvp and piracy is like the most important thing in the game to make that risk and reward uh happen so that's the like I always am of the if if I can I will fight so I want to make sure that that's that that's there but there's opportunities and situations where as a a miner cargo hauler like if you have a load of stuff on your ship like you're not fight you you don't want to fight you want to run you want to make sure you keep that stuff so that's sort of what I want to talk about but uh what was the first topic that I had there I I guess since we're we're gonna go there and I guess um with mining and stuff, one of the first situations that I have always dealt with and I de deal with more often than any is just the random person. One, maybe two people who aren't there necessarily to pirate you, but uh, you're out there, you're playing the game, whether you're mining, you're cargo hauling, or you're just flying around doing whatever, and somebody comes around and you want to... They want to kill you. What What... What's that engagement like now, and what is does it? What do we think it's going to become in the future? Uh, I guess we'll start with Jonathan because uh, we'll start with Letty when when we get into the more piracy aspects of the game and organized stuff. Um. Well, I mean, it comes down to a lot of things, right? So the main thing I would say it scanning is going to be huge uh, because locating these people in such a vast universe is going to be difficult. Unless scanning is yeah. something that makes it much more uh, easy to do. Um, aside from that, the only thing that I see as a concern to most casual players is going to be uh, choke points. So any entry point into areas, um, any entry into en uh, into stations themselves, it's probably the most dangerous thing in the game. Okay. Well, I agree with like scanning will will be important, and it is somewhat important now. I think Letty can probably touch on that. I'm I'm more talking about a situation where uh, maybe you've already scanned. And you've you've found me, and now what? Right? That's uh that's kind of what the the situation that I'm talking about here is. You found me. I may see you on my radar. I may I may not. W what's the engagement like now in Star Citizen three seventeen? And what? How do we think it changes for the better or for the worse in three eighteen? Okay, so it depends if they have a way of locking you down um, because the only way they're going to be able to pirate is if they have something like a Mantis or some form of webifying like EVE Online had that would not allow you to escape. Um, if that's not the case and maybe they do cargo where you get disabled and then all of a sudden they can just loot you, then they're probably going to disable you within like five seconds, especially yeah. if it's something like five light fighters coming at you. Uh, there's no way you're going to run from that in time unless you were aware of your radar and you caught it and you were able to dip in the other direction as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. What uh, what about a situation where it's just like one other person? That's basic, That's the situation I started with. We talked one, a lot one since person, then. One person, you're fine. You're going to get away. I mean... Yeah. Just hit B and fly away, right? Yeah, even even if you know we have these slower models, um, what it comes down to is acceleration. 
Uh, there's only so fast a reaction you can react to. And if you have enough of a gap to get distance, you can get away. It's not a problem. Yeah. And uh, the one the one thing that I always thought is weird about the current game is anytime you get new contacts and they're blue, it doesn't really say anything, right? You have to look at your radar. But if they're red, it, it'll be like contact. And you're like, oh, shit, somebody's here. And they're red. Let me run. So the current game is like interesting. I wonder if we can eventually set the radar a little bit and and decide to say contacts more often or something but i that that was my one thing that i wasn't like in the current model i feel like running is quite simple in a lot of ways unless you're going against an organized group um virgil i'll let you jump in on that one real quick is like it's the one or two that. players it's no, like you, anyone can run from anyone. It's yeah. Like if you were to put two sweaty groups against each other, um, now in any scenario that's like above, you know, three players, it it becomes fuel tank dependent. Like, mm -hmm. you know, time to kills hours. Um, you know, so it's just you can't even close a fight out with the max speeds right now. Um, yeah. That's why, like, for example, when Jump Town comes around, it's like. You know, you're waiting for Microtech, which basically simulates what this flight model is going to do, right? Which, um, through the gravity um, settings on that uh, moon, it, it's it's far tighter and it slows everything down and kind of gives you a sense of you know what the future is going to be like. But in space, in space, it just doesn't work. The game just doesn't work. It's no one can kill anything, um, you know, unless people decide to commit um, and. The meta is to you know try and recover your shields so yeah it yeah. just doesn't work at all it's it's really bad this should have come much sooner um but yeah like i wouldn't even say that good groups can keep on top of good groups because that doesn't exist the the uh like the only time me and jonathan have ever interacted in game was at jump town and we we i don't remember which jump town it was but we ended up getting as always fights always do you end up getting pulled away from the surface when we were out, up in space and we didn't fight for that long because obviously uh, you know my group isn't that experienced but i end up just getting frustrated with the fight because it was just i think it was my fault for flying too fast but we eventually got up to those speeds that are just ridiculous and then uh jousting started happening and it was one of those things where like I felt if if I was going to have any fun, it was commit. But when I commit, I'm, I'm dead. So it was just like, this this blows. And yeah, um, and you're forced into it yourself. Like, it's, yeah. yeah, you know, if you want to play honorably, you lose. You know, it's, it's what it comes down to. So, Ex exactly. Yeah. And and this is I kind of talked about it a little bit earlier. It was a tweet from Gabby, who's another streamer in the in the Star Citizen community. And I just realized that I never introed Hannah or Xperia 888, because you're not on the screen and I'm looking at the screen. I'm so <laughs> sorry. So no worries. We had a bunch of things, guys. I'm so sorry. Let's go ahead and, and stop right there and do that. Um, Xperia is on the line up above me here. I went, I went through the list in a circle and I didn't go past me to go up to you. I'm so sorry. So <laughs> Xperia is actually in uh, Mongrel Squad with agents and... Go ahead and kind of give, blink. yeah, give, yeah, give yourself a little intro. So I have, uh, we weren't expecting to have Xperia on, so um, uh, Letty was maybe not going to come on, so we had uh, Xperia ready to go. But then we were like, hey, why not just bring everybody on and have as many uh, roundtable as as we possibly could? So go ahead, intro yourself. Who are you? What do you do in Star Citizen and stuff like that? Why would you be here? Um, yeah, I'm a I'm a small sort of content creator. Uh, I don't I don't make many videos, but I do do a lot of piracy. I'm part of Morgan Squad, which is Adrian's is org. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I, I do a lot of piracy. I do a bit of combat lately. Uh, no, that, that's basically it. Um, she is one of our best Mantis pilots. So when it comes to pursuing yeah. targets and uh, chasing them down to pirate them, like she is one of the go-to people when it comes to that so and she's selling herself a bit short there of course of course i was gonna jump into it and be like stop it the um the thing that i've seen from you xperia is your youtube channel and same with with uh letty and 
Jonathan as well. Obviously, everybody here is a content creator to to all for from all different levels and doing different types of content. And the the thing that the Mongrel Scrub YouTube channel does a lot, which is if you guys haven't watched yet, it's addicting. I you know get go into rabbit holes and watch a lot of the videos a lot of times. You you guys really should. Is it's group piracy. But what I've seen on Xperia's channel is the solo piracy experience, which is actually really, really, really cool. Um, and I think that maybe you could probably speak to this really well, is you've done a lot of pirating people like myself. Uh, we've actually had had a little run in when, <laughs> at one point. Um, and the way that we interacted was a little bit different than the scenario that I'm bringing up. But if you happen to be scanning around, say, uh, I don't know, a, mm, a Lyria or another moon that, that people might be mining on if it's a rock mining, you know, in, in Hurston, let's say, and you just happen to find somebody, how would you engage me, let's say? And what would the opportunities for me to get away be now in the game? But then we'll go around again and, and we'll talk about what it could be like in the future and why it's better or not. Is that is that to me? Yes. Uh, so, so if you're in Lyria, um, you, and you're just solo in a prospector, as a pirate, if if you're running solo or with maybe one pe one person, there the, are the only really two ships are useful right now for for solo piracy, and that is the RSI Mantis and the Cutlass Blue. Yeah. Because it, the QED is just, it makes such a big difference. <laughs> In piracy, you, you, it's kind of a required uh, thing. If you can't tackle, you can't stop me from running, basically, right? Yep. Okay. Because uh, quant, quant, like quantum travel is just so yeah. it, it, in the current build, it's just the most overpowered ship ever. Yeah. It's like you just point at location and just go away. You don't need any sort of uh, warning to do that. Yeah. And you and, can't even and, tell when a ship is quantum traveling. Yep. Yeah, and like. One thing that's worth mentioning, and I, I wanted to make sure that we, you know, talk to this with the pirate guys, is the the quantum boosting, right? So, like, you know, if we're quantum boosting around the place instead of going to these OM markers, then that hurts the bubble gameplay even more, doesn't it? Like, like you guys are going to be struggling to intercept people on um, lanes, really, if they're quantum boosting to locations rather than you know, jumping from normal locations, right? Like you can do this stuff manually. Doesn't that make it harder to predict and try to catch people and intercept them with these? I models? mean, so it, it, it all depends on how far you can quantum boost. Cause in, in the citizen con, they said only 50,000 kilometers or so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anything that seemed to be the max that. and what ship yeah. they were using a cutlass and the max it showed on screen, I think was 25,000. Yeah. So I, I think, and, and they said longer than that, quantum drive is as not as normal. So I think people will 50, use quantum. Fifty thousand kilometers is still a fucking lot. So yeah, if but it's if not snaring... the distance between two moons. It's it's half the distance. No, between two sorry, moons. but I'm I'm talking like you know getting to like an outpost on a moon and stuff like that. Yeah. But mm -hmm. yeah, it also depends. Can we interdict ships who are quantum boosting? Um, we we already know that we can force players out of QCM into SCM with a QED. That was, we were told that by Winters at some point. Uh, as in the K Winter. Yeah. CID yep. dev. Oh, that's interesting. Um, okay. We don't know beyond that what QED will do for, for the new system. Yeah. So I was going to mention that if I hadn't yet is this unfortunately is going to be mostly the speculation show because this week we were supposed to get some of the team from the vehicle experience team on star citizen live. And I think a lot of the questions that we may have today or the things that we would be speculating, speculating on today would have been turned into fact yesterday. Uh, and that just didn't happen, unfortunately, for whatever reason and a uh, little disappointing, but we plan the show and we're still going to have it and we'll speculate more this time. And maybe we'll get together when we know more in a few months or a month or whatever, and, and see how things have turned out. Uh, I think that that would be pretty healthy and, and fun to do as well. Uh, but go ahead. I t you know, I'm going to try to speak as little as possible to show and just take things in. I think so with uh, regards to the um, concept of uh, like 
the quantum boosting and all that sort of thing, the like there's more involved with piracy than the like intercepting of the target. Like we got to find them first to before we can even start intercepting. So like we'd be scouting around to the locations where we know we'd be finding them. Whether or not um, we'll be able to detect ships moving in quantum boost is, you know, up to CIG. They have mm-hmm. mentioned in the past that they wanted um, players to be able to detect ships in quantum travel. So that could also apply to quantum boost. Um, but then, like, the current gameplay doesn't really facilitate being able to intercept somebody who is in quantum boost to be able to pull them out or anything like that. So far, all we know is that you'll just be able to stop people from entering, you know, um, was it QCM, so quantum control mode, um, by using your quantum enforcement device. And currently it's only two ships. Um, However, they did mention that interceptors are supposed to be the ships that are designed to do this type of role where they're chasing targets down and, um, you know, trying to prevent them from escaping. So with that in mind, like being able to, you know, chase targets down is one thing, which is, uh, you know, a pretty big part of piracy when we first start attacking someone. Yeah. But when it comes to like, you know, targets trying to escape, right now it's just, you know, max speed, go as fast as you can. Um, In previous patches, it was, you know, rely on desync. Um, and they'll still do this even when you got QED. A lot of players don't know what QED is, so quantum enforcement devices. They've never encountered it before. Um, when they do, it's an NPC and they just boost past it and that's it. Yeah. And, you know, they're out of range within 30 seconds. So when they actually in, you know, engage with players who are using it and chasing them down, like it's just max speed, you know, try and go as fast as they can, alter foring, you know, combat logging became, has become <laughs> really big in the last six months. We um, we regularly get called cheaters for using QED. Oh yeah, yeah, because they because they <laughs> actually don't wife. understand. Yeah, you guys. Yeah, you guys. Everyone in this channel right now, besides me, and even me at Jump Town one time, was just called griefers. Yeah, like we've all got the names, we all got the titles. It's okay. Three eighteen's fixing it all. Mm. But like, okay, so uh, like, think of it this way, right? Like, if. Where's the act of piracy supposed to happen? When you catch them, is it supposed to be en route? Or do you think, Letty, that it should be while they're doing the activity? You know, like, where so, do you foresee where you're going to be catching these guys? Because that's what like, my concern is. I feel like, yeah. you know, catching people in travel is probably now going to be the hardest it's ever been. And maybe piracy, you know, and I don't know, but maybe piracy is going to shift in the direction where... You know, you have to catch the minor mining or you have to catch the whole, uh, you know, landing at the outpost or trying to leave the outpost. You're not going to get them in quantum. Maybe you can't get them at stations, you know, because they're at the at, um, in that quantum mode. So, but go ahead. Yeah, so QCM, I see like the new master modes that we're getting. The way I see it is is that this is a step towards trying to push piracy out onto trade lanes and essentially moving us away from outposts and from um, locations where miners and haulers would actually be stationary for long periods of time. And the reason behind why I think that is that in an area like Stanton, like you got the Comrades, you got security outposts, you got armistice zones, you got security patrols and all that. Those are all influencing factors on, you know, pirates moving through areas. Realistically, we don't want to be encountering security. We don't want to be limited by any sort of security forces there. And in the current form of the game, like it, it doesn't really matter. Now, yeah. Like we already do it now where we go to the outpost and we'll intercept people as they're leaving the armistice zone, you know, like we know all the green zone distances for using the snare and the dampener and, you know, how far we need to be. We know the quantum ceilings for all the moons, all the planets, um, so that we know like how much of a window we've got to be able to intercept a target so that we can prevent them from being able to enter quantum travel and turn it into a SCM chase. And with the master mode, it sounds like the like 
and this is a concern that a lot of people are having. And, you know, if you were paying attention to Spectrum, it was on fire pretty much after CitizenCon yeah. with the announcement about master modes where, you know, like QED forcing ships into, you know, uh, was it standard control mode where they couldn't go past a certain speed and essentially locking them into, a, you know, the potential scenario where they're going to have to fight their way out. Um, like, in the current iteration of what we have now when it comes to security presence, the armistice zones and all that sort of thing, that's going to be the most likely thing that's going to happen. But in an area like Stanton, you would expect that you'd be able to call on security forces, you know, if you don't have escorts or anything like that with you, to come to your rescue, in which case the pirates really are having to assess where they engage. So realistically for us, we, even though like QCM um, can shape where we're attacking people, it's only a, you know, small portion of, uh, you know, the bigger picture when it comes to piracy. And, the, you know, this is just an extra piece that pushes us further away from, you know, loitering around outposts. Because right now with the way that we do it, we'll have like, you know, five or six ships you know, just outside a detection range of a target and we're all just there loitering and then we see Hearst and Security rock up and they'll scan one of us. And we're like, you know, notorious pirates, you know, just waiting for this person to take off so that we can go pirate them. And Nothing to see here. During officer. piracy hits. <laughs> yeah, exactly. During piracy hits, we'll be getting scanned. We've seen targets get scanned by Hearst and Security as well whilst we're trying to pirate them. And realistically, that security, you know, that NPC should be trying to stop us. It should be able to detect what's going on and go, yeah. okay, we've got to stop these guys. And to make that easier for the NPCs to be able to keep up with what's going on, you know, standard control mode, slowing everything down helps out with that a lot. And it, you know, forces us into a position as well. And this is something that a lot of people don't consider as well is that, yeah, we're forcing our target into moving slower, but we're also moving slower as well. So if there's ever a counterattack coming, you know, we're all moving slow enough that we can be engaged in combat as well. And during that time, that presents the opportunity for whoever we're trying to pirate to be able to get away. With the whole, you know, idea behind quantum control mode essentially negating a section of piracy, I don't I don't see that happening. What I see it as is a potential opportunity for CIG to expand on, you know, the chase when it comes to pursuing targets. Because this also applies to bounty hunting as well. Like bounty hunters have yep. to be able to, you know, intercept and they need to be able to disable. So a lot of what we do is right now will also affect bounty hunting later on down the track. Absolutely. I and was going to try and bring that up is, is people may think that this is all about, you know, uh, being on the wrong side of the law necessarily, but the tactics are exactly the same for the the bounty hunting side uh, in a lot of ways, for sure. Um, I was going to ask a question because the I had I actually missed this from Winters about the the QED taking the taking you down into SCM, which is you know maybe some people that are watching have as well uh, maybe missed that or didn't know that the. And I'll I'll pose this to Hannah and Jonathan. I I know you're you're been missed for a little bit here. I'll get you in a second. Is since you're a very uh, experienced Mantis pilot, what kind of skill does it take to use that and to and to be effective in that? Because when I hear as a as a player who may not want to be pulled down into SCM. How, where's the skill in doing that? And is it possibly a, a balance that is going to be tough to, to balance and counterbalance when I'm trying to run and you have a ship that can do this kind of special thing where I don't necessarily have a ship that counters that uh, without my own skill is it just a skill thing for me or is it a uh how does it work explain it to me as as somebody who doesn't know and maybe others won't either so so the mantis uh mm -hmm. I mean, right now it's like 
comically easy to be a Mantis pilot because it uh, okay. has just insane forwards acceleration as of a, a recent patch. Okay. But um, and and it also it, it, if you're in, it depends if you're in atmosphere or in space because if you're if you're snaring in space you can just put up that twenty kilometer snare snare whatever your ship you want from whatever tree lane you're pirating yep. and you've got them in like the just hydrogen engine sort of mobility and then you just got to keep them in a 20 kilometer bubble just avoid all escorts and mm -hmm. you're basically invincible because of how fast that ship is the only thing is if if you're pirating let's say an msr or a carrick um which are somehow faster than a mantis then you need <laughs> to you need to just sort of keep up at the same the same speed yeah uh okay. which makes it a bit a bit harder to avoid escorts but then if you're in if you're in atmosphere it's a bit different because you're probably not going to be 30 kilometers away from an outpost at which you can activate the snare so you're going to have to use a dampener which is only two kilometers so you've got to sort of weave your way past the emps that are trying to disable the ship but also be close enough to the target that you uh, stop them from jumping. Yeah, and because and, right now. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, so 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 right now there's this green zone around outposts and stations, which means you can't activate the snare. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how long that's gonna gonna stay there, but um, it's pretty annoying. Yeah, I I think we all know eventually it won't be there. the The other thing that I was gonna touch on with what Letty was saying was the counterattack idea, and the one thing that they've really been kind of pushing and trying to chill everybody out about a little bit was when the ship speeds slow down things like turrets are going to be more effective how do you guys yes. feel and uh, i'm going to go to jonathan first since um he, he hasn't had much of an opportunity so i'm going to try to manage the the conversation as much as possible how do you feel about turrets on not just uh pvp ships that are meant like combat like uh i guess uh aggressive ships for turrets but also defensive turrets on a lot of these ships and how that might come into play because as far as i understand the mantis and the cutlass blue are the like the key factors here and those at least the mantis is supposed to be pretty easy to kill if you can hit it so is that going to change in this scenario? I think a lot of people maybe haven't really been thinking of, of that. And cargo haulers might actually, instead of bringing a group, actually putting people in a turret might be a thing. But I don't know. What do you think? Um, here's my prediction. I think the Mantis is going to get changed. Um, and it has to do with what CIG has been saying about interceptors. Okay. Um, I think the Mantis is going to focus on pulling people out of warp. And it's probably going to be something we can uh, scan down and locate. Uh, but I think it's going to be up to interceptors to actually keep pe people from getting away once they get out. Because as everybody here knows, the Mantis is fragile. If you try mm -hmm. to warp scram uh, a carrier with turrets and that Mantis is going 200, 300, that thing is going to get nuked in two seconds. Yeah. Um, that's that's the main thing. And yeah, as, as the other question was on turrets and, and their speed and how it affects. Um, it's going to come down to shield management. I think a lot of things that people are talking about is we're saying, oh, you know, because speeds are much slower, ships aren't going to be able to get away or jousting isn't going to be a thing. Um, I think that's not true because of acceleration. It doesn't necessarily have to do with our top speed, but more how quickly we can change directions and how fast we can change those directions. Um, so when it comes to turret gameplay, it's going to come down to a lot of teamwork and a lot of hitting and running. So people who need uh, get the attention from the turrets don't apply damage, but stay kind of evasive. And then when people are free to engage, they do as much damage as possible to the ship. And it's just going to be a hyena effect. You you come in, you attack, you coordinate, and just keep wolf packing the other ships. Do you do you think that um, a lot of what CIG is always trying to do is create this choice? Do you think your choices are going to change a lot more about what ships you fly? Because I yes. think the example you're giving are, are is if if your group was in light fighters like they would be today, correct? They may yeah, not exactly. be in 318. So we're, we're going to have different options, right? And I always base my, my opinions based on what roles CIG is trying to accomplish. Yeah. So we know that heavy fighters are supposed to be uh, something to help keep light fighters away, but really do a lot of the damage. And I think they're going to excel at wolf pack tactics because they're going to have so much HP and tank ability to work with. Mm -hmm. um, where a light fighter is going to be more of the counter to those heavy fighters. 
So it should be the, the job of the lights to keep the heavies away, and the heavy should be trying to to go through that and take down the bigger ships. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, that's that's been their whole plan for the the slowing everything down, is that we, we start with that, and then all these things should fall into place. Hopefully but, that's the case, but Virgil, go ahead. I don't uh, know. Yeah, I was going to say. But the reality is, is you're right, though, Mike, is like... Yeah, the, the ship's speeds are coming down, but the weapon speeds are staying the same, so they're not going to scale. So yeah, like, turrets absolutely will be far more powerful this coming patch. Like, And yeah, that's intentional design. Like, if you are flying a Gladius at, you know, 250 around a Hammerhead, you know, in range, which is, what, 2K? Like, yeah, you're going to start getting cooked now. Gotcha. So... Absolutely, you know, and that's like really good gameplay, right? Yeah. Like, we want things to escalate. We want, you know, the size of ships to matter. Um, and, you know, I, I, I'm pretty sure I speak for all of us, but I, like, I'm tired of fly, flying just arrows and gladiuses, man. I, I bought the game yeah. for more than that. Um, so yeah, I do. I think it's gonna, you know, tie up the circle a lot when it comes to that kind of gameplay. And, um, you know, turrets are in a really good place right now. That's one of the you know things that they've done since they took that created that team that they've done really well um and yeah i think there's definitely going to be an argument for you know if if you're you know getting messed with as a trader and you you're not using turrets then you know you should be because this is the time that it is going to shine um jonathan's right though like there's there's going to be ways to outplay it and and i think it's going to take a lot more coordination like he mentioned to take out the bigger ships but i think the bigger ships are going to get their time in the sun now and i think that's like really promising is go ahead i think somebody we, was gonna we're already go ahead. doing simulations like similar to this like that we um like whilst we do go out there and we'll go pirate other players part of our training is to do simulations where it's like what we consider our nightmare mode so we'll have you know that cargo hall that's got turret gunners and escorts and all that sort of stuff and we'll take one of our raider teams in and their objective is to do the same thing that we do to players in the game and we've been given the answer to defeat us for years now and people still keep ignoring us it's like use turret gunners use escorts those are literally the counters to us and they are just as effective now as they will be in the next mode what people are going to learn when we get the master modes is just how strong those turrets really are because yep. like, you know, as the guys have pointed out, you know, we can't move as fast anymore. If we start getting hit right now, you just bang out at max speed and you know, yep. you're like four kilometers away out of range. Just, just leave you weapon range real quick. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. can't travel two K at a blink of an eye now. So yeah. Yeah, yeah it's absolutely like, a thing. Doing these simulations as well in the atmosphere, like uh, on you know, moons with thick atmosphere like Aberdeen or Ariel is a really good um, training area for, you know, experiencing this type of scenario because you're forced by the flight model currently. Like you can't move as fast. Your cargo haulers have a lot more um, thrust power at those um, thicker atmospheres. So they are able to punch harder and move faster. So, you know, like for us, we've got to, you know, be able to predict better we've got to be anticipating what we're doing we can't just nose onto the target because of the atmosphere causing you know issues with the uh um bloody flight model of the ships itself so we can't just do what we do in space decouple turn and face and you know just keep traveling along the same vector you know we've got to actually start trying to fight for position and you know conduct strafing runs and you know try and you know gain elevation and come down swoop down on them just so that we can you know actually drop shields and um go after the turret gunners and during this time the turret gunners have just free reign like you know they the ship can just go in a straight line like a caterpillar is actually quite strong in this scenario if they've got turret gunners on it and you know once a shield face starts getting low just rotate the ship and you're back at you know square one but a lot of the problem is is that there's a mentality where people are still treating star susan as a solo game and you know 
the, the irony is, is that master modes is going to be a bit of a wake up call for a lot of this community where it's like, okay, combat slowing down. If you end up in this scenario, you're going to have to fight your way out of it until the rest of the systems that get come in place for it, providing better security from the NPCs and all that sort of thing. You're going to have to you know, take a bit of accountability, take a bit of responsibility for your own gameplay, start using your turret gun and start using escorts. But then what they'll find is like, it's actually fun. You know, it's engaging. It, you know, like a lot of people, you know, that we do pirate that do manage to get away. You can tell that they're happy, you know, like they'll start gobbling off and chat at us and, you know, telling us that we're shit. Normally it's one of us has made a mistake or, you know, mm -hmm. stasis and things happen and the game desyncs. They don't have and me in a mantis. Like, <laughs> yeah. Um, but like, you know, to prevent a piracy attack is quite easy and the tools are all there. The players just aren't using them. And when we get master modes, what we'll see is that everything will slow down and it's either everybody will learn to, you know, like actually start doing the thing that CIG wants you to do, which is engage in the gameplay that is there, or, you know, they'll just continue bloody causing. Yeah. You're going to have to figure it out. Stuff. Right. Yeah. 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 That's, you mentioned, that's um, my, go ahead, go ahead. And then I'll jump I was just going to say, you mentioned, you mentioned you guys like simulate it for practice. Um, and it's probably important to note too, like jump towns coming up this week and you know, the best organic simulation for what this is going to look like is when this thing, when jump town rotates the microtech, like that's a, a really good, um, taste test of what's to come. You know, those speeds are forced down really slow at jump town. It's a whole different game. Um, you know, when the, when, when the game rotates, um, jump town to microtech, like my guys, we bring different ships, you know, than if we were in these other weaker atmospheres where the speeds are at that 1200 bullshit. So yeah, like it's, you're going to get a good taste for it there. And um, you're right. Like, you know, I think the the entire meta of things will completely change with this for sure. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, the, the thing that I wanted to jump in with is it does feel to me, and this goes for any combat scenario, because one of the scenarios that I, that I want to talk about, and it's the one where uh, I was fighting somebody 1v1 and they're better than me. And I bit off more than I can chew. Shit, what do I do? I, or any situation where I'm engaged in combat, I have been tackled by a mantis. I've been, uh, you know, so I can't leave with, with QT and all, and all these scenarios. What do, what do I as the player do once that's happened to me? In every other game, there's like a timer on these tackles there's a timer on roots so i get rooted for a period of time and that gives the opportunity for everyone to jump in and kill that player or if they don't you know use their ultimates or whatever like obviously star citizen is not a uh fucking moba but in a lot of ways there's certain ships that are playing these roles right so it's it's uh it's hard not to make that comparison what it, where's where's the balance in that if to me it feels like the mantis even though there's definitely some skill involved to stay within that range it, there's no like timer to the route would that be a beneficial thing or would that be way too far in the favor of the player who might want to disengage i think that would not like i know i, I might sound biased because i'm a mantis pilot but that would yeah. not be fun for me Okay. Because it would mean like, okay, I'm sitting in this trade lane. I'm waiting for a target. I yep. activate the snare. I then have what a timer until it turns off arbitrarily. Um, I mean, if you have a stock mantis, it will eventually turn off because of overheating. But like, you can yeah. fix that pretty quickly by upgrading. Um, but I, 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 I don't want arbitrary rules like that, especially since well, if you're sorry, sorry, keep, no, keep going, no, keep going. Sorry, sorry. No, it was just like, um, I mean, normally you don't, as a pirate right now, you don't just wait in a trade lane waiting for things to come. You go out actively searching for targets, sure. predict where they're going to go, and then set a snare. So you do normally have a good idea on, on how long you'll have until you snare them. Yeah, but, and, um, I, and I would also, let's, um, let's rotate the clock forward a couple of years. Maybe we have server meshing. Maybe there's more players in a server. So it's it's less of that I've waited for hours upon hours upon hours to find somebody. 
And this is something that's happening more consistently, uh, I would say. So the the I've waited forever and I, you know, I, I feel like hopefully that you guys have the all right, we'll get them next time. Uh, next target, you know, kind of scenario would be. Oh, I hope so. Yeah, I hope so for everybody, too. But the the for me, that's the thing is I, I don't want that to be a factor in okay the conversation as much because i don't think it will i hope it won't will i hope it won't um well in that case in that case you also have to worry about like uh interdicting non non-targets like npcs or security maybe um if you're just waiting that long and there's like a, a, a more of a chance of catching people but i i still don't think that a timer on the qd is a good idea okay for that reason mm-hmm even if it's uh um, reason you longer than like you that. know a five second one like it's a pretty significant one 30 40 seconds of you are stuck for a while and then there's a little cooldown and maybe it starts back up i don't know i'm just playing devil's advocate here i don't actually necessarily think it's a good idea either but you're just... asking this because you're weighing whether or not people should be able to outplay getting away from a mantis right like that's what you're trying to get to yeah right? there i wanted to i want there to be uh maybe a counter to that that is yeah. similar in skill level to having to use a mantis uh some sort of uh something i can add to my quantum drive where yeah. i have a, a a button i need to press but stay a certain distance away or something you know like similar Eve, but opposite it's in just uh, online, going around the mantis yeah. In EVE Online, say you web, like, snare a ship, right? Um, you know, that's going to catch every Joe Blow. Um, you know, like, any guy with a normal fit is going to get um, slowed down by that. Unless you've got, you've picked the counter to that, which is a warp stabilizer, which basically means you can't be snared, right? So, like, and that's my question is, is maybe when you're not supposed to beat the Mantis. Why? Because Hannah here you know, is wearing the consequences of flying a much weaker ship yep. by being in the Mantis, right? Like, yep. you kill you know, it. That's your, that's your She's counter. not in a Gladius. She's not in a yeah. Saber. You know, she's in a Mantis with size twos, right? Like, so maybe the answer to that question should be in the preparation before you started trading or before you started mining. And, um, Henna, you just mentioned that one of the two ships that evades you a lot is the Star Runner, right? Oh, yeah. That? And isn't that considered like a blockade runner? You know, like, so maybe okay. that's yes. the ship you're not supposed to beat. And if can someone I, can picks I that, that ship, they have the smaller cargo. Yeah, sure, in a sec. But like, say they pick that ship, it's the, it's got smaller cargo. You're not trading as much. You're not making as much profit. But when you get caught, you're going to outplay them because you made that sacrifice. You know, maybe the answer to that, Mike, is in the preparation rather than, you know, during the combat of it. Sure, and that's what CIG wants, right? Go, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Xperia. Okay, so, yeah, I, I, I literally just made the exact point I was going to make. It's, it's about the preparation mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to piracy. In a, in a fight, in a combat scenario, do you really want the, the solo cargo hauler to have a chance against an organized pirate group of, like, eight people with a Mantis? Uh, no, uh, not not necessarily <laughs> eight. That, but but I've played games where there's the the well, best can can possibly survive yes, that scenario, yes, right? I would like, like that. Like there has to be a, a this sliver of an out. But uh, what I do I'm not saying, want automatic uh, wins at all. No, 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 no. Not automatic wins. It has to be like yep. the you have to be great, but you can. So that's what, that's all I'm saying is that I don't want there to be automatic wins on your side either necessarily, and it and it feels like it it could be that way, but maybe not. I because I again I don't know. I'm here to learn. I'm not here to tell uh, about anything. As as the industrial player, I think the the skill should be knowing how to avoid a pirate attack in the first place, preparing if you somehow yeah. do come under attack. But if you're just a solo solo player and, and you just casually jump directly from Arc L1 to Arcorp with a, a white suit, no guns, uh, no escorts, no turret gunners in a caterpillar, and you get interdicted by a pirate group of like eight people, then you can't really complain if you get if you get pirated. Yeah. I, like I the agree. counter to QED is literally just don't go directly to, to where you need to go. And I think quantum boosting will adjust that. 
And it's also why I think the Mantis will have to change slightly. Yeah. Um, I think a Agents was talking about this a lot, is that the Mantis should possibly be able to just follow a ship and then interdict it mid-quantum, similar to uh, Elite. That'd be cool. Because uh, otherwise, because quantum travel seems to be moving away from a direct thing to more of a, an active thing. I could be wrong. Yeah, I, that would be hard because it moves so fast. Yeah. yeah. Well, the scenario like that I always like to think of when it comes to chasing targets, because that's what it is. That's what you're doing. Like you'll pull them out of quantum travel and then you've got to chase them down. Because most of the time they're not going to just sit there and you know let you wail on them. Sometimes they do. Um, sometimes they recognize who they're getting pirated by and they're too busy talking and chat to us to bloody tell us that they're fans. Um, <laughs> but the you know, the chase is one of those things where it creates that, you know, tension, that interaction, and really, like, I hear what you're saying with regards to what you're um, saying there, Mike, you know, like, the little slither of hope that yeah, you, know, you players need the should hope. have. And I've encountered players like, you know, cargo haulers who are in ships that are far inferior to what we're flying, and they've used tactics to be able to get away from us. And it's quite impressive, you know, like I've had cargo haulers try and skip us off the atmospheres of moons and, you know, like they're dipping in and out and ex you, utilizing the acceleration of their ship because they've got the bigger thrusters, they can punch out harder. So they'll, you know, be dodging us around, you know, for a bit, lead us on a bit of a merry chase, you know, try and string us all out. And then they'll start, you know, like dipping in and out of the atmosphere. And I can tell you now, ex unexperienced pirates, inexperienced pirates, they don't recognize that. And they will overshoot the target long enough for them to jump away. Um, you know, like the chases that we get involved in right now, you know, the worst, before it used to be the best tactic, which, which was just max speed, fly in a straight line and rely on the desync shield to bloody protect you long enough until we either get bored or we kill you. Um, or you can bedlog. Now it's uh, with the fixes for desync that we've all got, it's more or less like, you know, they've all just switched to combat logging. But the ones who do try and, you know, avoid us, who try and fire back, they'll use maneuvers and they'll leverage the, you know, acceleration that their ships can just, you know, just punch out harder than what we can. And we've got to be on the ball with what we're doing and making sure that we're leading their movements so that we can stay ahead of them. And with a, you know, even with a Mantis, trying to do that and keep ahead of them, like a C2, for example, is a really, you know, really difficult ship if the pilot who's flying it knows what they're doing. Like that Mantis has to stay on ball. And when you got like three other, you know, EMP ships kicking around and you might have a couple of, you know, counter escort fighters there just trying to um, help with getting the shields down, collisions are going to happen. And that's what, you know, cargo haulers can do, industrials can do. The main issue that a lot of players have, though, is that they don't have that sort of experience. You know, like we'll pirate five people in a night and we'll gain a range of experience doing that. Most people, you know, who get pirated, it's like once, you know, maybe in a year. I have and been pirated twice. It's been you guys twice. And it has been in the course of years, right? years yeah one was the worst experience for both of us possible and the second was yeah. probably the best it was really fun but it, it, it's it's so rare and i really want to i really i'm glad you brought that up because i really it's not the topic of discussion today but it sort of is and it, the reason why i've brought up the single player scenario the single player against me and the single player that I am is MMOs sadly aren't what they used to be and MMO players sadly aren't who they used to be and these games have shifted solo 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 content solo content solo content so players have definitely gotten used to taking their Argo Mole their C2, their Caterpillar out by themselves because it's too much work to do everything else. And that's part of a uh, poor design on CIG's part, possibly, 
or great design on CIG's part, possibly forcing players into doing this, but that could hurt the game, that could help the game. The idea of coming across a group of eight Mongrel Squad players is incredibly unlikely. And the finding a group of organized uh, cargo haulers is equally as incredibly unlikely. So that's why I keep bringing up the scenario of no matter how many players we have in a server, guys, there's it's a lot of the situations that we're going to come across are going to be these solo experiences, are going to be players that want to play by themselves because it's too much work to do everything else. I'm not one of those players. I mean, I currently am, to be perfectly honest, but it this is what the world is now, sadly. So it's, do does the game change or do, do the players change? Like, what happens first? And if the players aren't willing to change, like, the game just dies. So that's, like, sort of where, sort of the perspective that I'm coming from is there has to be a chance for the solo player. The solo player has to have the opportunity. It can't be easy, but it has to be there or I think the game dies. Can I can I talk about that? Please. So as a solo player, yes, there are still good options as, as for, 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 for avoiding stuff like piracy. Like you can just not bring a ship that has no pilot guns, like a, a Carrick. Sure. <laughs> as, as a start. Yep. Um, and that, that's, that's the biggest thing. Like, if you fly a Cutlass as a solo player, you're going to have a much better chance um, fighting pirates versus a bigger ship like a Caterpillar with no turret gunners. Yeah, can and I jump wanna... in for a sec? Just yeah, really quick. Um, I had this crazy scenario where I went down. I was just going to do a bunker, and this guy was there with a tank, and he had an A2, and long story short, I stole his A2, okay? And his friends all started coming, and I was fighting... I was dogfighting in an A2 against a Gladius. And I got his shields down. And if we were in a different scenario where he couldn't run and get his shields back up, like, I maybe had a chance to have won that engagement. That's very similar to what maybe a C2 versus a Gladius would have been, right? And then eventually we were just standing there and nothing's happening, so I just left. It, it was stupid, basically. But yeah. that that's I think that's a good point you make, and I just had an example like that that I, I felt like jumping in. Sorry, continue. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, the the A two is uh, what well, I think it accelerates faster than a cutlass in every direction. So that's that's fun. It was fun. <laughs> like I felt it felt really stupid because it kind of felt like I was dogfighting in a giant ship. I also yep. bombed one of their friends who thought they were hiding on the uh, the surface. That was cool. <laughs> nice. That's great. Yeah. But um, yeah. So I, I, as a solo player, you, you're you're just you don't have you shouldn't have options um, to, to to go into the sort of bigger leagues and instances. And I think that's where bigger sort of multiplayer play should happen. Mm -hmm. So if you want to fly a whole C or a whole D or a caterpillar, then you should have to bring a couple players. Otherwise, it's just I mean you can still do it. You're just going to die are to the, pirates. Are there even turrets on thing. the whole ships? Uh, there are. There, actually, I think that's I think this whole C has like two size fives okay cool We're i think it's pretty strong that's really important ai slave turrets yeah i was actually going to bring that up too i don't, don't think cig thinks that's important <laughs> yeah, yeah. Copium, I, copium. <laughs> well, we're, I think we're it talking might be about but future hopefully. content right and we're talking yeah. about future battles so i think ai is a huge game changer for people and it depends how good they make these ai if they're actually going to be viable or not oh man I, I it's so viable. tarred yeah, because like, what game has has had AI that are as effective as as players? It's like very well, feeling like maybe mean, Tarkov. They they shouldn't be as effective as players, right? Yeah. Like if if you're okay. if you're in a group of eight versus uh, like the two people and then a, a couple of AI, you, we'll you should win. Six AI, make it even. What here's, do you think? Here's yeah. my take on this, right? Because we're talking about turrets, we're not talking about piloting. I think AI should be as good as players. Um, because targeting in what I think is going to be the huge difference between a crude human ship versus AI is going to be the communication and being able to focus fire other ships. AI won't be able to do that, but players can. That's interesting. And also just general it, it costs. There's a cost factor to that. And maybe that'll mean something one day when money means something in the game. 
uh, a bit more than it does now. Do like um, is- do like do like a hypothetical like Mike. Like, do you believe that if you were mining, um, you know, on a moon in a prospector, that you should be able to get out of that if you get caught? Or do you think it should have been your responsibility to mine somewhere smarter? Oh, it should. Like, and well, do you get caught? You know I mean, what I'm my, saying? Like, the way you, I the way I mine do now think is the balance should be. Well, yeah, the way I mine now is to just be smart. I go, I fly mm-hmm. into a location, and I don't QT to anything. I fly down to a random spot on the surface, and the only way that I'm getting caught is if you're watching my stream and you go down to the the location uh, that I'm going to, because you could tell by the the way the planet looks or whatever, right? Um, Mm -hmm. Or I just get really lucky and somebody uh, happens to scan, or really unlucky and somebody happens to to scan in that area and and find me, right? But the- Do you think think that like where they're going with this, if the master modes is to benefit in addiction and, you know, making it hard to escape, harder, not impossible, but harder, do you think that that's in a good place or would you prefer- you know, the prospect is being able to get out of that, you know, like be able you know to go from zero to a hundred real quick. You I know, think what do you think that sits? Can I, can I maybe like, uh, answer that question with a, with a different, like totally different question. Yeah. It, it's Absolutely. more what, what Jonathan brought up was like scanning. I feel like scanning is, is in mm-hmm. like the, the stupidest place and is, is so not normal at all. And, and just this, this placeholder pile of garbage yeah. where, it's just so weird. Like, I'm sorry. So pirates, if you get pirates caught, are scanning and finding rocks and not ships, and 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 miners are finding a thing things that they're not looking for. It doesn't make any sense. It's yeah, very very weird. Bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> right. So they're scanning went backwards. Exactly, yeah, dude. It's so dead. It's so bad. And then when you scan, but- it's not like it 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 lights you up. Like, I think that yeah. the way that the game is is probably going to go is what they showed us at Citizen Con with the individual player, right? You did a little scan, you get all your little items in front of you, you do a big scan, guess what? You lit your ass up to everyone around you. So if you're Letty or Xperia in, in Mongrel Squad and you're scanning looking for me, the, the pitiful miner, I'm going to know that you're looking and I'm going to have the opportunity to leave. And if I'm not paying attention, that shit's on me. So to answer your yep. question, I think that's where that's where that that so yeah, scenario so should be played out. You don't stand a chance if they caught you, but if you had scanned, then you're rolling the dice and could maybe get out before they get to you. Yeah, or, that would make sense to me. That'd be a decent balance. Yeah. Or the yeah. classic CIG thing is is we give each other the choice. Uh, they can have certain components on them that maybe makes their scans a little bit less uh, yep. powerful. Yeah. yeah, I love but, that. I actually but, really like that. But, but yeah, their visibility goes down, but I have a radar that is a little, you know, I choose to choose a radar that does something negative to me, but gives me the advantage of knowing that somebody pinged me early, right? Like these are all mm-hmm. things that we're not playing a finished game. These are all things that they're most likely going to consider. These aren't crazy ideas that I just made up in my head that they probably didn't like. We all know that I'm sure they've talked about these things. The implementation is the hard part. So that's the the thing with, with all that. I think that's how that scenario plays out. I think it all plays yeah. out where we're 100K from each other, 25K from each other, 50K from each other, or or excuse me, maybe even like three, four, five K, like just far away from each other where we're not on each other's screens. We're not on each other's radars, but then we made a choice that that scenario happened and i guess i mean you're making a good point uh about about that that maybe that's where the industry player ha- makes their decision the right one yeah, or the maybe wrong it should one should be strategy and preparation more so than in yep. the minute you know like yeah you know, i think that's, that that's... there's a debate there it's hard to get the it'll be really hard to convince the community of that you know because they're used to like our mongrel friends here are saying you know just flying with complete immunity but yeah, I think that that I think that that could be like the answer to a lot of this, right? Is like it's it's gank prep, you know. It's making sure that you know you're you're expecting it, you're planning for it, you've got a plan for it, all that jazz. Yeah, I mean, Xperia yeah. or Letty, how do you feel about that? Because it does sound like it's a little advantageous in in the my favor, the minor favor. In, well, in well, that, that, that that's what we've been saying. Is it's yeah. it's all about the preparation yeah. rather than the actual fight, like. Mm-hmm. 
obviously a prospector is is never going to be as good in a fight as a as a gladius. Um, yeah. It shouldn't be because otherwise we use prospectors for dogfighting. Yeah. But it's it's all about the preparation, and this is one thing I always see when I do a, a shipboarding. Um, is everyone just wears a white suit? They don't bring guns. They don't bring armor. They don't expect to be boarded. And when it's they do, they're not ready. It's a bunch of sperm running the, around. The best, one of the best game experiences I had. I, I randomly prepared one day. I wasn't lazy, and then you guys came around, and I had, I happened to have a railgun on me, and it was, it was awesome. And it, it, I'm yeah. sure, you know, you guys were caught off yeah. guard a little bit. I was, I was caught off guard initially. Then you are. It was so fun. That this we is all up on their YouTube channel, by the way. Yeah, yeah. We weren't expecting to lose a warlock. Like, when it happened, we had no idea. Like, uh, it was Kanja that got blown up first. And he's like, what the hell is going on? Where did that come from? Yeah. And then, you know, like, the the gameplay of trying to find, you know, Mike, who was running around with a railgun at the time, we had no idea. We just thought, we just knew that there was one person on the ground and we didn't see any other ships in the area, so there must be a railgun. Yeah. And, you know, we weren't getting the shield notifications either, so... Baron almost died and he only noticed at the last moment that one of his shield faces was disappearing. <laughs> um, and that got us flying all evasively and you know, we had to drop one of our Marines on the ground just to go and hunt Mike down. Yeah. You know, it reaffirmed the you know, respect that the railgun deserves. But the, the thing is, is like, you know, the point about preparation, like people just want to be able to, you know, jump in game, you know, thumb and bum, yeah. mind neutral, and just, you know, move box from A to B. But when it comes to, you know, what we do when it comes to that preparation right now, like, you know, we study what cargo haulers do, where they go. We study what miners do, where they go. We study, you know, like how the, you know, the ship properties and all those stats and things like that. Like the level of preparation that we do when it comes to, you know, piracy, it, it just doesn't scale when you get that, you know, solo space dad kicking around in the, you know, C2 fat arm in it with a bloody hold full of Laronite and they're just expecting to be able to escape. It's like, fuck you, man. No, you don't get <laughs> to escape. We put all this time and effort in. Yeah. We train, we do all yep. this shit. Why do you get to win when you did fucking nothing? Because dying Why? is not immersive. Well, th I mean, there's, there is this factor of, uh, death of a spaceman that that comes into play here that is kind of it, it gets crazy with the with this stuff is players don't this is really where I want to take the conversation now and I'm and I'm gonna shift over to Jonathan and probably Virgil a little bit more here is just general dogfighting PvP. You don't want to die. And they're gonna go more in the direction of uh disabling ships. But PvP, like I, I can't imagine that the the satisfaction that we get when we do PvP and we do blow up a ship, that they really want to take that away either, right? And Death of a Spaceman has this like weird um, factor that comes into play with that. Is I am in a fight, I'm losing, I'm losing. Does that mean that I lost? Uh, Jonathan, I'll I'll go to you. Where's there's where's the opportunity comebacks. to to survive? Basically, yeah, there, there's always comebacks, and I think it depends what they do with scanning once again, right? Because even if you eject, like I mean, they can scan your body down and shoot you. Yeah, like it's not yeah. it's not a savior button. Um, currently, I think the escape system is, is the ejection system is kind of pointless. Yeah. Um, even even with death of a spaceman, because of what I said, maybe they'll target you and kill you. But it depends. Like that's a one v one. Maybe they're trying to be like super mega. You're gonna die, die. So they're gonna hunt you down and kill you. Um, the other thing we have to take into account is like, who cares for some people? Like I, I know personally the way I play. Like if I can get my ship back and my guns back, if I die, I lose my skills. Whatever the consequences of death of a spaceman, I don't care. I'm out here to shoot people. <laughs> that's mm -hmm. all I care about. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of how I, I'm not going to, unless the game really forces it, uh, the 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 idea of like losing my character is not going to play much of a factor in for me. But I wonder, you know, are the, the space dads that we've we've talked about will likely care a lot. 
Yeah, some um, people okay. are definitely going to get rolled by it. Um, and, you know, it comes down to how much they care about skills, faction reputation, whatever they decide to take away. Yeah, if I can, you know, if also, I can say something. One thing I wanted to add, I'm sorry, real quick, about the other things we've been talking about where these power groups are attacking people. Something we haven't really considered is, you know, there's also going to be other groups that are going out with a mining ship with a big signature, and they're going to wait for you to try to pirate them, and then they're going to launch a counterattack. Because there's people enjoy that kind of stuff. Hell yeah. I'm, I'm up for that. I want that. I want, I want anti-pirates. Yeah, I think, I think all PvPers and all pirates want that, because I think that's what we're looking for. We're looking for fun, engaging moments like that. And yep. another thing solo players can do is, like, remember, these power groups are here to have fun. So if you, you can either try to have fun yourself, or you could be an ass and just self-destruct in front of their face and take them out with you. I don't think I've ever been killed by someone self-destruct. Nobody tries it, but it kills people. It kills ships. One of the questions that I want to ask you guys, though, you know, like you may not care about what happens to your avatar, but what about your time? Like you're, yeah. like you're in Pyro. You know, you're dogfighting in Pyro. Closest place to respawn is going to be like a 10-minute quantum travel away. You know, like the I way that you approach that combat then... <laughs> Well, that, that's just I, it, though. I like, have to spawn at Grimhex. I already deal with that <laughs> shit. But yeah, no, I, I know what you mean. Grimhex yeah, master race. Like, and and also, consider, like the ramifications of you dying in combat beyond, like your, you know, what you lose to yourself. And this, this is actually one of the points that I kind of wanted to talk about as well. Is like master mode shaping the way that combat goes, where it moves away from, you know, very individualistic and just hyper focused on what the individual can do and focusing more on team you know combat because you can't like in a system like pyro you couldn't afford to lose half your force if you're you know trying to take uh, an outpost from another group you can't afford that you can't like just send you know like you can't have your pilots going in there as individuals and everybody, you know, just chasing one target around because you're going to have an organized group who just, you know, fur balls it up. They all ball up and they just start smashing everything that comes near them because, you know, it's all going to be, be about, you know, maximum damage going on to a single point. When we get master modes, speed slow down. You can't run away once your shields go down. Because that group is going to be able to keep up with you. They'll recognize what's going on and they'll just start pursuing and they'll smash you as well. And you can't go as fast. And if you try and you know, go into QCM, you're going to lose your shields. And the interceptors are going to be on you during that entire time before you start you know, moving at faster speeds. So when I keep hearing about people talk about you know, dying, it's one of those situations where I'm like, you know, death really doesn't mean much in this game right now. But when you look at it from a tactical sense of, you know, like you're trying to achieve something, the time that you end up uh, like investing into getting to that point becomes a lot more valuable than what your individual avatar is. And that's where like, you know, like for us, you know, teams that are working together, group gameplay is going to become, you know, more, more and more important. And that's something that I think is lost on a lot of the community. Yeah, the game already punishes death like incredibly high already with the just time sync of I think trains and all this other shit. I think like you're onto something, Mike, because I mean, like, what's poisoned the game right now? Like, I can't get fifty of my guys to log in at all, none of them. But like, what's poisoned the game right now is you can't, you know, reach any sort of PvP conclusion if someone doesn't want it to, right? So like, you can't kill someone that doesn't want to die. It's just the way the game's designed right now. Now, the problem is, is when this comes in, these master modes, these fights are going to reach a conclusion, right? Like 20 people go to jump town and another group of 20 comes, well, like at least 20 are going to die. And I think that the balance in that, in the idea of protecting the whole like death of a spaceman thing, is like, you know, I'm not here to, you know, it, the, when people go to jump town, they're just looking for ship explosions. So maybe like, you know, ejecting and then landing on the ground becomes a, you know, a bigger part of the game. Or, you know, when they said that the future is going to be disabling ships. So what, you shoot a ship, it explodes. It doesn't actually, like, you see the explosion, the pretty fireworks, and it just falls to the ground and you're still in it. You know, and you might be still alive. You know, so there's like, there's ways it could fit in, but you're right, they kind of contradict each other in a way, don't yeah, they? Is like, they really is do. this mode... 
but but it like and that's and that's concerning too because you know like that's what's really driving me mad with this game right now is that you know you can't close the deal and you know and they they want the future to be where it's such a rare thing this is death of a spaceman the consequences are real um and i think i'd be surprised to find out that they wouldn't be dialing it back a bit i'd I'd imagine the death of a spaceman consequences are going to be a far lighter than what they originally proposed to us because yeah. I think, you know, ships blowing up is going to never not be a, a, a reoccurring thing, you know? So, but yeah, it's, it's worth asking about for sure. And, um, and I do think that like, you know, I, I would love to see ejecting and like, you know, being stranded and needing rescue and stuff to become a bu- bigger part of the game for sure. Mm-hmm. But um, it's going to be really refreshing to actually see these things happen, you know? And we've yeah, been mean, robbed of it for so long. Yeah, and, and the, the thing that I... The reason I brought it up is, you know, when you're when you're in a fight, if you lived, you won. And and if I got out of that... If I got out of that scenario and, you know, lived to fight another day, that's a win. Even though I got my ass kicked by you or Jonathan or anybody else, if I survived that fight, I won. And, and, but what I do see is like the toxicity of, of most PVP communities is that if I run, I'm a pussy. It's and true. yeah, but you know what? If I, if, if I, if you didn't kill me, you suck. That's salt. Yeah. If you didn't kill me, you're just shit. Stuff. So that's, that's what it is. Um, cause you know, I've, I've played games all the time, and if I like games like like PvP games, and if I survived, you just suck. So if you let it, me let me add a, something you know? here. Um, it, it has to do with what you were asking earlier, Mike, and and it has to do with being a solo player and, and surviving these engagements. So this again uh, depends a lot on what they're planning. But let's say they make Interdictors the only ship that's capable of stopping you from going into quantum mode. Well, mm-hmm. they've already started to leak SCM speeds, and we are starting to see what speeds are going to be. We know the Arrow is going to be 270, the Gladius is going to be 280. Uh, when you look at interdictors, which are supposed to be responsible for these things, uh, stopping you from going into quantum mode, we have the Origin 325A, which is capped at 225. So I think a player is going to have the capability of focusing down the interceptor, then using slingshot maneuvers to get away from the combat and get out of the zone. But you're going to have to be tactical. You're going to have to be able to know how to use slingshotting, how to control distance, how to be able to cause separation and closing the distance to be able to take these interceptors out and push out of the fight. So the interceptor flies slower in SCM, but should be able to get into QCM faster? Is that it can saying? go into QCM faster, and according to CIG, it's going to be able to keep you from going into QCM mode. So if you can, like here, to give you a better How? idea, if we look that's at the question, like the war- we don't know yet. We yeah. don't know, but what we do know is they're going to stop you. Okay. Uh, my guess is some form of system. Who knows? Maybe a hacking system or a lock-on system. But they're probably going to have to maintain a certain range, and because they're not as fast as light fighters, there's going to be opportunity for players to outplay and dodge the interceptors. In my opinion, again, we don't really know. Out of interest, did they say anything about uh, civilian ships, like non-combat ships, what their speeds are, are going to yes. be? Yes, um, there it's it's actually available to everybody. CIG said they started uh, posting the um, the speeds on the website, so all the specifications are different. Um, oh, okay. So the civilian ships, which one do I have here? Uh, I have, I mean, I don't have a civilian ship, but the Aurora is going down to one ninety five. The Warp oh, is wow. two twenty five. The Hurricane is two sixty five. <laughs> Prospector is 200, so you will be able to outmaneuver um, an interceptor if you know how to fly well. Okay. It's on. This Didn't is they on, mention this is um, for people. If anybody is curious, when you go to Robert Space and you look up any of the ships under technical uh, specifications, they've been adjusting all the speeds of all the ships. Sick. Here we go. It's Hannah, happening. didn't they mention? <laughs> didn't they? Hannah, I, I know you were part of the conversations. I think I I wasn't reading them at the time, but um, didn't they mention that they're gonna use um, fuck, what is it? Like grav guns? What is it? Um, are you talking about like the, ships that Argo thing with... that tracks you in? Tra- no, like beams? track the beams, track the beams in weapon mm-hmm. slots. That was it. Like they were talking about that, right? I think you were part of those I conversations, don't remember. With Hannah. Uh, that's I probably do know that tractor beams, you'll have to disable no, them before not, you can not, use it. No, it's not. It's not. Oh, okay, it was, okay. It was public. But, yeah. 
Yeah, so I, I imagine that's probably where the inner addiction side of it's going. But mm. a lot of people are asking that in the chat. So I what think about... like that's what they're eyeballing for the future for snaring is is tractor beams. On what the fuck happened? What the fuck happened to distortion cannons? <laughs> oh, it fucking don't ask the mongrel guys. I know it re happened. I remember. I remember telling Hannah, "Did you see these changes?" And then she saw them. Yeah, I was. I was. That was bad, man. Yeah. They, they, so so I understand why they why they did it, but what they I don't know why they did it at this time. Why did yeah. they wait until specifically now before we have proper systems to disable ships? But oh, I don't know because I so so 318 right is coming out at some point. Um, <laughs> we're gonna be able to to, to steal cargo. But they have just enough distortion to the point where it's basically impossible to keep a ship disabled longer than 10 seconds. Under, unless you're under like very, very specific circumstances, which you can't do with every ship. Um, so, so we're going to have stealable cargo, but no way to get on board the ship to steal the cargo. So, yeah, distortion is kind of fucked right now. I, yeah. I, I don't know how it's going to play into the new system. Yeah, quick it, thing on that's distortion. The problem. Um, like, they, that's... Go they ahead, actually sorry. work really well if they're not moving is the issue. So if you have like a, a Hornet built with repeaters, we've tested it and it works at like two, 300, no problem. You will shut off ships. But once they start yeah. to exceed 300, it just loses its shit. And it's like, nah, it's, like it's not about, it's not about disabling the ship in the first place. It's about keeping it disabled. Mm -hmm. uh, once it, once, once it you disable it. used to stack, it, right? It used to stack and it no longer stacks. Uh, so unless you have very specific circumstances where the coolers have less distortion health and you disable the coolers first and then it overheats the entire ship for like 20 minutes which i think is not fun in the first place that's that's no. a bad mechanic yeah um but if you if you overheat the so if you disable the power plant first then the ship just turns off for 10 seconds like just is no longer affected by distortion turns back on they immediately have all their systems back and uh and they can keep going mm -hmm. which so I, it's the way that changed. distortion damage was supposed to work though like the post from years ago, somebody made on Spectrum, they asked, you know, what's the counter to EMP? And uh, I believe it was Calix Renault brought this up and he explained how EMP is supposed to work. It's actually called distortion pulse. And the way that ship components are supposed to be affected by distortion damage is, is that the amount of distortion damage that they take is relative to the amount of power that they are actually receiving or the power plant is putting out. So if a power plant is only putting out 10% power, it only receives 10% of the distortion damage. But that also means that it only takes 10% of that amount of distortion damage to shut it off. Mm -hmm. And the way to counter that was that you just turn the component off and then, you know, buddy, it's immune to distortion damage. So what we got in 317 was exactly that. Components that are shut off are completely immune to distortion damage. It's the first time that it's actually been oh. like that. However, however, it's really, it's really, they, they didn't change the actual values at all for that. Um, so it's still the, the same. Wasn't it? Yeah. So, so the components are, are still the same, like distortion shutdown as before. So basically, they can still turn on after like ten seconds. So, so even if distortion is closer to what it was promised. It's still completely pointless right now because the ship can just turn on and then no longer be affected by distortion. Yeah, so essentially the thing that I was talking about before with the QED where the, the timer should be a certain length. So if you shut down a ship, it gives that player, the team that yes. shut, shut them down the advantage for a period of time. And then that advantage is taken away for a period of time so or whatever would have been nice because... 10 seconds is way too short. How do you get out of your ship, board a ship in 10 seconds? It's possible. Yeah. Piracy is about control, right? So you want as much control over the target as possible. Yeah. So you so snaring is the first bit, distortion is the next bit, and then boarding and uh, holding the pilot at gunpoint is the next bit. Yeah. And this is why you guys run with like fourteen EMP ships, and it's like EMP fourteen yes. charging now. You know. If so we want to disable a C two, if we want to disable a stock C two with like grade C components, okay, we need three Avenger warlocks all to fire at the same time, and then yeah. it'll be disabled for ten seconds. And if we, I'm gonna go ahead. Sorry, no, go ahead. If we want to disable a reclaimer, 
We need 18 Avenger uh, Warlocks. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Have you tried with the worst years? thing? The worst thing is too is I'm gonna give you some tough love here, but like like the fix to what you're describing, I, I hope you guys aren't like holding out for it in 318. Because it it's gonna take this gigantic distortion rework for them to just unfuck what they've done. Like yes. and that's like the worst part of these guys' development process is like they're not in it for the band-aids and yeah it sucks i really wish they'd look after you guys and some of the other loops that are really lacking right now but i think that you guys are sadly going to get that same same treatment which you know i really despise about yep. how these guys operate is they're going to wait for the huge gigantic you know um distortion rework you know where they reinvent the wheel and you could be looking at a year. You could be looking at two years. You know, we don't know. Well, the, the thing is, I don't know. I don't know why they changed it now. Why did they yeah. wait? Why didn't they wait until they had an actual solution? Why did they do it right now, just before Pyro is about to get the one thing dude. we've been waiting for? It's why the same we... reason they took out ballistics. They want people to only use laser repeaters. Yeah, it's it's, it's, it's <laughs> the, that's the perfect point, right? It's like. Like, ballistics didn't work, no one uses them, but they're not gonna, like, fix them now, no. There's gonna be a gigantic ballistic rework a year down the track or something. Guys, so, guys, so, just wait yeah. for armor, it's gonna be great. Oh, yeah, that's gonna fix everything. <laughs> Shut up, <laughs> Jesus. So, so, I've been hearing that for damage. four years. Distortion damage has been... Uh, I call it the red-headed stepchild of Star Citizen. Every patch it changed. Like I'm not yeah. kidding. Every Seriously. patch from three zero. And I don't think that they changed. were doing anything. Like I don't think that they were changing. It just did it itself, didn't it? Like something. <laughs> one patch would be fucking crazy, and then the next patch it would just be completely dog shit. They, they I remember never put it in the in the patch notes either. The the yeah. Vandal Mask event. I had. I was like, all right, I want to get this thing legit. And I was flying a Gladius with all Panthers, and all all Virgil had to do was say, just put one distortion weapon on your ship and you'll kill everybody and that was basically the only change that really needed to be made it is this for the easy. vandal helmet sorry yeah 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 true 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 just put it on your nose you'll you'll beat mostly everybody <laughs> just oh, yeah. trust me just trust and, me <laughs> yeah and just put your shields forward a little bit you'll be fine and that was it he's like why why am i doing this don't worry about it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah i i yeah, honestly wish i honestly wish they kept distortion as it was Increased component health and just removed the distortion repeaters entirely. Mm. Like just get rid of them. Keep the sucker punches. Get rid of the repeaters. What's that's that's somebody, how I would have. That's how I would have done it. Somebody said it in chat, and the reason I actually brought up the distortion was was before they said this too. But I was kind of thinking the same same thing was the interceptors. Like, what if they just had locked just i mean you can't do this but what if they just locked distortion repeaters to those ships and that's the way you prevent ships from going into qcm mode or something but i i think that they want a more uh elaborate and and cool solution i would yeah. imagine from what i understand is like this thing's going to be coming to us in a like very finished state like this is squadron 42's like major gameplay this is what it's going to be like to play Star Citizen. And I'm pretty sure it's like coming in a relatively finished like product. So yeah, I imagine, you know, you're not going to wait for a lot of those answers. I think you're going to immediately know, you know, what that looks like. I think people are going to immediately be intercepting, you know, we're not going to wait for some intercepting patch or anything. I think that we're going to figure that out really quickly when it does come. If I think Virgil does, said but... very finished state and star citizen in the same fucking no, sentence. I'm like, well, it's like this. <laughs> it, it, and I only, I only say that because, you know, this is, it's squadron 42, right? And that's like the only thing they care about, right? Like we, mm -hmm. we know Whoa. that deep down. Squadron 42 famously in a very finished state. Yeah. Yes, and yes. this is like, like you don't have a game if you don't have like flight and star citizen. So I just imagine it would, it's going to come in a finished state and, you know, they say they've been working on it for years and years. So, you know, I don't, I doubt it would be half built, but yeah. yeah. For, from the way they've been talking about it, it does seem like Yogi's a love child. Like, yeah. Yeah. Massively. Uh, distortion is. Oh no, no. Uh, the, the new no, changes. The, Oh yeah. yeah, the whole thing. Yeah, yeah for sure. No, okay. uh, from what I can tell, Yogi absolutely despises distortion change. <laughs> oh damn, that's okay. I, I love you. I love her. I love Yogi. But uh, and the the, the VET is only like five people, right? It's it's really tiny. 
Yeah, I believe yeah. it's a oh, pretty yeah, small team. Yeah, I think team. so, yeah. Yep. So I'm going to sneak somebody on who was also going to come on. to. Uh, we, we panicked when Letty said he wasn't going to make it and, and asked every pirate that I knew. So Space Cutlet <laughs> has been waiting in, in the wings. So let's bring another pirate in because we wanted somebody to, t to play the pirate role on the show. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump Space Cutlet in. The reason we've made him wait, and I'm going to let him hear this, the reason we made Space Cutlet wait as long as possible is because this man can talk. <laughs> and I wanted to make sure everybody could get some points in. Jonathan has been the most quiet. I've, try I've, I've tried to, to manage as much as possible. Jonathan, I'll apologize now. No, um, don't worry. It's, I didn't I do, do the best reason. job. Okay, I didn't do the best job I could. But I, I'm trying. So, Cutlet, I don't know if you can hear me or if you're still here or AFK or not. Um, but I know yeah. he was, yeah, I know you were following the conversation. Is there anything that you want to add to it um, and, and and all that? I mean, like, you guys covered most of the points, so yeah. I don't think I'm going to talk for too long. I just can probably double down on, on, on the points you discussed over the ATC, right? Mm -hmm. um, like, I've heard some interesting discussion you guys made, and... Um, about the mantis um, and like the proposed like maybe cooling down. I I'll probably just comment on what I think you've discussed. Okay. Uh, just give me one sec. No problem. But yeah, I've never heard from him ever again. Yeah. <laughs> I. Uh... I'm sorry. I have a lot of background uh, stuff here. Uh, as you it's... know, my living conditions are not the best. Yeah. It's totally fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah, um, I like the idea. Like, not 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 that I like the idea, but I like the discussion about like, is meant should mantis have like a cool down? Uh, you've talked about that, mm -hmm. and like, uh, I kind of agree on the pirate side of that um, point of view that no, it shouldn't because uh, uh, like the only thing it's gonna get if you kind of gonna restrict like mantises to specific like. Um, cooldowns is people are just going to bring more mantises that's that's going to be as simple that's as that point yeah like uh, you, okay so the mantis have a one minute use one minute cooldown you're going to be you're going to bring like two mantises with um uh, that can just uh, rotate okay and uh, i don't think that's a good gameplay uh, what, what i think is the good thing like a uh, looking into even line and like how to escape a mantis uh, is like creating something like a warp stab. What's uh, that? And um, so that that, 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 w that will um, uh, like protect you from a certain like disruption strengths. Like in, 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 oh, in yeah, the scenario that of, up. Okay, okay. Yeah, in the scenario of Eve, it's more simple because it's like a directed um, beam and like one beam is one point mm -hmm. and one stab is one point to counter it. Like it, it probably should be more complicated in terms of um, in terms of um, Star Citizen because like it's not a direct thing in Star Citizen; it's just an AOE bubble. But something like a disruption strength and then the device that makes um, a counter to that strength on certain strengths would be a good thing. Yeah. Um, also, the point that Mantis um, like should mantis live be more hard um i don't think so like really? everyone okay. who was flying like mantis know how weak it is like i yep. think she oh did oh okay do you I, I i misunderstood it's it's hard enough already is what you're saying yeah l gotcha. l like uh, like, um, i think cag did a very poor job on uh creating mantis mm -hmm. uh Agreed. don't get me wrong but they created a ship with a cross section of a vanguard with the uh hp pool of an arrow and with like a maneuverability of um i don't know like it's been better recently but still the, the huge cross section little firepower and the weak hp you, you your engine goes off and you just get spinning i don't think you should increase them unless you rework the ship completely unless you increase its strength um and potency I, I don't think you should make like mantis life much more harder um good good points were like blockade runners i think someone mentioned yes. it in chat yeah v like Virgil ships, said it too. 
like yeah like something like a star runner uh mercury shouldn't be like the fastest ship like speed shouldn't be an um an uh, escape point it should be the utility it can do like something like mm. pre-installed warp stabilizers like they do it in a for certain cargo ships like pre-installed like systems that uh, fight a certain amount of qed disruption for example right something like that would be nice can i jump in for a second I, yeah sure i, I would Almost never respond to chat, but I, I imagine that this is going to be a conversation in the comments and, and things that people are going to say. Uh, one guy says, what if Star Citizen was EVE, this ATC? And it's like, yeah, what if Star Citizen was a game? That would be really fucking cool, wouldn't it be? And and the and the idea of um, that's pretty much every ATC. It's not what if Star Citizen was EVE, but what if, what if Star Citizen took simple mechanics that worked in other games uh, like i mean i was arguing what if star citizen was a moba an hour ago right and in in a, in a in a way there's there's plenty of mechanics that work really well in other games that cig just has absolutely no desire to even think about in this one or even think about the the game part of it right now because they're too busy with it's the foundational not about part, yeah you know it's it's not about star citizen being an eve for sure uh, it's about looking at something that works. that works yeah and making your own like uh, making your own like decisions upon it like hey that's that is something that works for years how can we build up on that? like the entire freaking civilization works like this generations build upon something that other people did generations back and they improve on it like why it's like literally the, the the same topic, like reinventing the wheel. You don't have to reinvent the wheel, the wheel every time you you create something. You just have to look on something that has been done and make it better and more interesting, more engaging. But like get the logic of what has what has been done and something that already worked. That that's about it. There, I, I don't want Star Citizen to be Eve 2.0. Don't get me wrong, right? It's just there is an example of something that works where players have options. That's that's the only reason why Eve comes up so many times uh, in the discussion ac across the years of discussing Star Citizen. Right? It's because uh, there is an open environment. There is a game with an open environment where there is like industry and PvP and interceptions and piracy and why it works good. Right? That's the only point why Eve like gets up in the discussion so much. That's it. I don't yeah. want this to be Eve. Like Eve is Eve is different. Star Citizen not going to be uh eve another interesting thing that you guys discussed uh with uh, with piracy is boarding yeah yes. um it's like one of the most important things i think yeah and and i wanna uh, and i wanna just put up a question here on the point of the uh on the point of uh defending site what if you're getting boarded and you defeat all the border. You're still, you're still fucked because there will be someone outside there in ship, um, probably who will blow you up anyway. This, this, this like this question always bothers me, and I never have the answer for it. And you I'm just putting their out bodies this question. and repair your ship with it, and then leave. No, but there will be just people in the know. ships, in in the ships outside, who will still blow you up if their mission fails. Yeah, but like if, that if always you, bothers if, me. I, I can but see, I, mean, I can see why, but that, but that, yeah, that's the point. Like, yeah, you have you have people. Like when I when I solo when I solo boarded ships when that but went back on that was possible. Yeah, but then that, that, that <laughs> I mean, comes to a question. Getting ganked, I guess. I mean, what else? You're, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yeah, in a one v twenty. Yeah, you're yeah, in a one v twenty. There is probably is not no to win. no answer yeah. for that question. <laughs> it's yeah. just it's just your fate. Yeah, yeah. I, I think and, uh, boarding is very engaging and i think they should try to to get more of it which is why i'm sad that it appears that the legionnaire has been taken off the progress tracker yeah uh the the mosquito that thing yeah yeah <laughs> that was a ship i was looking forward to most man i'm yeah. so sad yeah i mean yeah like fuck they're they're trying to push multi-crew kind of but not actual like combat multi-crew scenarios so i think more players are going to play with each other but it, it's still this weird dynamic where 
if you, you're getting 1v20, you're getting 1v20, you're dead. And and, and I think it, it hopefully comes down to, I don't know if you heard that, this part of the discussion, the them finding you versus me knowing that they're looking. Um, you know, and then I have the option, like where, where I survive and that's how I win is before the engagement ever happens. Um, yeah, but yeah. One of the things I mean, that I think your goal a lot is of to just thinking about look is... at that, at that point, you have two options when you get one V2, you either try to enjoy it and try to make it fun for yourself or you get mad. And I think the better route is to just have fun, kill as many people as you can. And then, you know, you're going to die. It's, that's the point of it. But at least you have a chance in Star Citizen. In EVE Online, you get webified by 20 people, you're fucking you're done. <laughs> There's nothing yeah, you're doing. That, that's one of the points I wanted yeah. to, 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 to bring up. Uh, like, again, EVE comes up just because an example, right? It's not because I want it to be like EVE, but just as an example, right? Uh, there was a question like, solo, should solo player have a chance, right? It was a big question. You guys discussed it. Yeah. Um, because solo I think players if, are going to be the majority of the players in this game, yeah, whether we like it or not. Unless, unless the, um, unless there will be a shift of paradigm in the mind of a player base, right? Mm -hmm. Unless that happens, it's not so, going to happen. Well, that's questionable. That's questionable it's because not. <laughs> look at any any MMO in the world. That is, it's not. That depends on how the game develops. Mm -hmm. Like I've seen quite a lot of uh, online games where people understand there is group work besides even line okay besides even line <laughs> where people understand solo they're pretty much done for so um i think there is a problem with uh, having a like a solo if solo players should always have a chance to like as you said mike if the player is super good right you should be able to get out of scenario, certain scenario. Um, I think it will be very uh, fast for people to realize what exact steps uh, have to be done to save themselves. And then everyone, there will be a guide on YouTube and then everyone will know how to dodge an infinite amount of opponents. So if you create that chance of a single player to be good and escape, they would probably, like, every skill is based, like, on something, right? Certain actions. So if you will, um, if you will nail down those actions, create a YouTube guide, that means the opposing party, no matter how much people they gather, even if it's 10 people versus one, if that one person knows what to do, he will escape. And that brings us to an awkward situation. That's, I think, let me stop you there, because like I can watch as many Jonathan Winters uh, and and uh, AV1 and and anybody's tutorials, and I'm still gonna be dog shit. So, you know, like I'm still not gonna be as good as as other players. Can you like win a twenty or something? I came in second in a tournament, and I and I defeated the, uh, what probably like the number one ranked person in that tournament, Burks, but. You know, yeah. just saying. Mike. I got carried. <laughs> Mike, <laughs> not I, just, I, I just would imagine those ways to fly away and like escape for a single person will be more of a utility logic than exactly flying skills. So okay. when it comes to utility logic, you just have to know it not just train your muscle or memory. And that yeah, would yeah. be much more easier. Because, like, I, I don't think, like, outflying, you, it's possible for you to outfly with your flying skills, like 10 people or so. Yeah. Anyway, I, I feel that the best thing for a solo player to not get ganked is just know its surroundings and where it's going. And that brings us to the whole new question of security and where solo players can play and cannot play, right? We, we now have only Stanton. As I always say... Um, like, for traders, Ariel is pyro right now, right? Yeah. So it's just about knowing. You, you, you're go when you're going trading to, to, like, Ariel, it's like going basically to pyro. When we'll have pyro, it's going to be pyro. So it's just a, more about knowledge and where you can go and where you cannot go. Obviously, again, if we're, like, breathing copium here and all that, we understand the security will tighten up and, like... Um, 
there just will be no chance pirating people easily at somewhere at Stanton or higher up systems. You, you'll just get smashed by AI in future, copium, breathe in, yeah, all that. Yeah. From, from the way from the way Spectre yeah. talks about it, you'd think that they're just like security just gonna spawn on you like in Cyberpunk. Like I mean it 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 can be a thing. It can absolutely be a thing it, in it certain can be a thing. systems. Like, and the pro, moment you're getting attacked. Yeah, you, you I think it, it totally should be. Like in a secure systems, if you're getting attacked, like uh, they just warp in in like two seconds, and then you get just laser beam, literally. Uh, and and I'm totally up for that. that. I, I think every game should have a safe space for those single player guys who don't want to commit to a high risk, yep. uh, like gameplay. It totally. Yeah. It, the game will die <laughs> if it's not going to be there. Virgil, say it. Say it in voice. Muggle talk. Fucking, <laughs> fucking muggles, dude. <laughs> no, what, but what does uh, that mean? Like a muggle sure. is like normie, normie, basically. But the 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 I I agree with that a hundred percent. Like there needs to be a place where yeah, people otherwise just hang the out. game will die. But the game has to has to entice nearly everybody to want to come out of that safe space. Oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Yep. The the lucrative um, incomes of. Uh, a great unknown should uh, try to drag people out of the safety bubble. Of course. Why, so why does Jumptown exist? Why does Jumptown yeah. exist? It was that that enticing thing, and everybody got enticed. Uh, but like, yeah. people people are gonna solo whole seas through pyro, then complain when they get pirated. Oh yeah, but that's gonna be totally on them. Accept it. Accept it. Yeah, like, yeah, that's, one thing, that's one thing that drives me nuts about PvPers and and uh, pirates is. I the the only thing you guys complain about is when people get mad at you. Like it is that is it's always going to happen. I enjoy people, when people get mad at me. Good. People good. will it, get it, mad. Yeah, at I don't want to use the word like complain. Comment section. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I have. I love it. It's insane. But the, it's, not even, it's it's not that though. It's not when they get mad. Like when they get mad, it's entertaining. It's when they like they get toxic. They get you banned, and they're like, yeah. oh yeah, follow yeah, yeah. the report and stuff like that. Like yeah. It's when they've got no idea about the game they're playing. Like, what that's bothers what it is me, for me is when they get mad and they start saying that the game is broken. Like, there are three words that I've been saying to Mongol Squad now that are going to echo throughout the rest of the community. Oh, no. And it is might makes right. Right? It will yep. not matter. It will not fucking matter if you're a solo space dad kicking around in a C2. All right, it's all about numbers. Like th that's why, like this whole master modes thing. Like I'm seeing a shift when it comes to combat, where groups are just going to start blobbing up, and you know, like we're going to get into those fleet battles that everybody wants to, but not because you know, like it's the cool thing to do. It's because if you want to survive the fight and you want to win, that's what you're going to have to do. You know, for those solo players to be kicking out and kicking around in those starter areas with those security forces that, you know, just instantly, you know, teleport in front of you when you get attacked by pirates, they're not going to be just showing up with like one or two. They'll show up with an armada and they'll just smash those pirates. And that's an example right there of might makes right. You know, the government, you know, is supposed to be the most, you know, strongest group there. So they're going to have the numbers and resources to be able to, you know, swoop in and save that solo player. But if that solo player wants that ability out in a system like Pyro, then they're going to have to bring that with them because might makes right. Damn. Like, that's, uh, that's how it goes. Well, so and then, like, talking about the, the lowered speeds, I, I think everyone has to get ready for more casualties. Even more experienced, like, super experienced players should get ready for their asses oh. to get kicked by the numbers. I think just just get ready for it. Uh, like you can dodge, but when there are like five people on you and you're a super pilot, like unless you are very aware of what's going on, the asses are gonna get kicked. So it's gonna be an interesting like shift in how people perceive combat, how people perceive the life expectancy of their ships uh, in the fight, and um, overall the approach to fighting. I, I think. A lot of uh, we are invincible uh, because we know how to engage and when to disengage will go away. I'm not saying it's not going to be a thing anymore. I'm saying 
like it's just gonna shift to more ships explosions on both sides mm. and um it's gonna be fun uh i feel it's gonna be fun yeah i mean that's what kind of jonathan's been saying the whole time just like have some fun you're gonna die a bit and and there's gonna be some explosions and stuff uh i just worry about the future part of the game with with the whole death of spaceman and, and then virgil also said hey uh they're probably going to dial that back, and I think so as well. So I just, I just, I, I think they will dial it back, and I also think that um, we we're not gonna see anything like of actual like death of a spaceman until everything is in, mm -hmm. until the armor system is in, until the <laughs> proper. Like, it's gonna be a while, boys. Yeah. Until the you proper. You need to see someone die, though, right? Like, like if I see a ship explode and then it's just like a wreck and there's pieces and there's a guy still alive there, I don't care. Like, I've, it still feels like you won. So yeah, you know, even yeah, if, like yeah, we yeah, said yeah. earlier, it, even if you have to leave the explosion in. Yeah, yeah. For the winning's gonna still feel like winning. Yeah, like win it just means that they didn't like they like. Didn't I, I, I'm character. not even sure there's gonna be even an, an explosion like when when the ship it like because you just damage. For example, you've penetrated the armor. Okay, copium here. Okay, I'm sorry, chat. Copium here. Oh. So you've damaged the like went through the armor, took off the power plant right, and uh, it just it just powers down. The ship literally just powers down. That, that That's it. And you you see its signature goes to zero, his EM goes to zero, his IR dropping, right? And it's not moving. You know that that opponent is out of the fight and you just switch target, right? Yeah. But, and it's going to be explosions. insanely fun. Look at the Freelancer when you tear apart the engines and shit like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, I mean, you can still thing? fly a Freelancer. <laughs> the the Hornet. Hornet does that, yeah. yeah. One thing and we haven't... It, Sorry. And unless ahead. you like put in insane amount of damage to destroy like whatever core or something so it explodes yeah it's just going to be floating there and it's going to be like very cool very cool I, and then the pilot can eject or get out of the cockpit and then someone can pick him up and and all that so like and then he can shoot a railgun yeah, and then he can shoot a railgun. Exactly. It, it, it's it's going to be... Uh, actually, if it's a single-seater, you won't probably be able to have a railgun in, in the far future with you because it's, like, too you, too big to you'll get put in, it the in the it. You'll put it in your... A, a yeah, 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 yeah. In your rack, maybe. Shh, copium. Shh, shh, shh. There's yeah, yeah, inventory yeah. Copium, on the Gladius. Please, more copium. There's no copium. There's <laughs> inventory on the Gladius, you fucking idiots. Come on. You can't fit a railgun in there. Yeah, you cannot fit a railgun there, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know about anyone else, but I, I would like boarding to be the, the final thing if you want to take over a ship without blowing it up. Like, a, like you disable the engines, it's toast, the ship is toast, but the people inside are still alive. Oh yeah, I want sure. I want boarding to be the final thing. I think if, if cool. you if wow. you want to get the full potential of cargo inside of the uh, hauler, yeah, for sure. You you have to board it. Like how uh, what's the other way to get the cargo? Right, even so a whole sea. It, it has to be. Even a whole scene, maybe you should have to go inside to to unlock it or something. You know? yeah. Maybe, yeah. One thing, one thing I really want to hit, because we haven't, we've been on fucking piracy for the last three hours, but like... Sorry. One thing I wanted... No, it's okay. One thing I wanted to mention too is like the, the reality of flying at these speeds. Like one thing I'm looking really forward to is the idea of like actually flying between fucking asteroids again. And, 100%. You know, actually... 100%. Like see, like flying around mountains, and you know, like the actually taking in the scenery. You know, if I if we got into like a group fight right now at Grim Hex, by the end of it, you know, Grim Hex is going to be a speck of dust, and we've all drifted, you know, three hundred, four hundred kilometers away from it. So, you know, I think that um, I think and it's going to be really nice for these fights in these areas to be like far more grounded. Um, I, I also the hope we're going gonna... to be up close. Like you see enemies up close, not. 2k away you know stuff yeah, like that true. i also yeah. hope for some future environments like we could see something like that in a coil or something where you could with these speeds you can kind of dive into the cracks of the asteroids and all that you know yeah and to to have yeah. the chases that's going to be cool but and we used to have that like in, like in three four everyone knocks three four because it was like Fortnite in space but you know, you were kiting around asteroids strategically, you know, like you try to line of sight people when your shields were down, like there was so much more to the game, you know, and right now we're all just, you know, roller skating around or ice skating around shooting at each other. And then the fights accidentally drifted off to Narnia by the time it's finished, you know, but now you're actually going to take in the terrain and actually use it and stuff like that. I think, 
I think bringing yeah. these speeds is going to help us down a lot there. Let me yeah, put out my, my, my can of Coca Cola. Yeah. I like, imagine ask... a dogfight where, every, like, you see everyone on your radar, you know? Like, they're not, you're not quantum jumping to go help out your friend and stuff. Like, it's yeah. ridiculous. I want to jump Jonathan into the conversation a little bit. Just, just, you know, now we're more on the topic of PvP rather than, than piracy a bit. Is the, the idea of with the slower speeds, the player being on your camera, like you're, you're mentioning. And how easy or hard do you think it'll be? to have it stay that way. Like, I, I don't know. I feel like when I fought before, I almost never used the, uh, the lag pip because I, I was always fighting and shooting at just a, a lead pip the whole time because I'm fighting against people that are zooming around all over the place and everything like that. And how, do, how do you, cause as an inexperienced pilot, I was never a, a effective or good at, staying close to the person I was fighting against. They were always getting away easily from me. I was struggling to catch up to them. And then it turned into these because I was, I was, you know, slamming down on my, my pedals, basically trying to catch up. Now we're just fighting mm -hmm. at insane speeds. How do we think that's going to change? Um, you're going to have a little bit less distances being um, brought out into a fight, but I think we're still going to have the same thing. Okay. Uh, and the reason has to do again with acceleration. Yeah. Um, but what people need to uh, learn, it, it's something I've, I've taught a lot. It's, it has to do with lead pip. If you understand the lead pip and you understand its direction, it actually gives you vector information, which allows you to do something called uh, pip neutralization. Uh, basically, what I've here, I'm going to demonstrate with something. Okay. Oh, Let's you say, muted. For example, oh, there you are. Now you're not. Yeah, sorry. Let's say, for example, you have two ships. Uh, what ends up happening, I can't really push the talk and do this at the same time, but what I'm going to say is <laughs> when one ship, the blue ship is going to be the ship and the red ship is going to be the vector. If you neutralize, you're putting the vector on top of the ship. So that gives you a relative motion showing that there is no directional speed change between the sh two ships because they're both going to be moving in one direction. So what ends up happening when you neutralize is it allows you to push forward or push back easier. Now, because they're neutral, they're, they're, what's it called? Nerfing back strafe. If that ship is facing you, he's, and he has to face you if he wants to know what you're doing. If he's facing you, it's going to be easier to push on that ship and stay on that ship. Now, a pilot that wants nothing to do with you is going to keep his ship pointed in another direction. And he's going to keep trying to move the pip away so that you cannot get closer to him. So that will always be a thing. Okay. The difference is, people who are trying to run will not be effective in combat. Oh, yeah. Very good point. Okay. Oh, yeah, I totally understand. Because if, if I can't backstrafe at the same speed or, or more than I am going forward, I can't fight in that scenario where right now people are just going backwards and fighting at the same time and remaining in control of the situation and running at the same time. Okay, interesting. And then nerfing yeah, exactly. that, right? Like, that's coming with debuffs, you know, whether it's going to be, like, black. We don't know what that looks like. Is it going to be blackout, red out, you know, like, Finally. is your character going to get dizzy? But the fact that they're going to be punishing people for flying backwards but trying to remain offensive, I think it's, like, you know, it shows at least that they know where the issues are, you know? Mm -hmm. We're all... Everyone complains about back strafing. Well, you know, they're... They're fixing that, or they plan to combat that, and that's good, Let me, right? Because fi finally, you get a lot of people. Let me add a, second constellations. That's you, get, you, get, <laughs> you get these people that are always like, "Oh, you know, this is six off. This is space. You know, we, sh you know, our modern fighters can fly faster than this, and and stuff like that." But at the end of the day, it's got to be a video game. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a video gotta game. It's got to be fun. It's got to work. And right now, it's like, yeah, you, people just backstrafe and stuff. So the fact that this flight model's taken that into account, I think is, is going to be a really good thing when it does show up. Let me uh, talk about this a little bit because I think there's, there's a lot of misunderstanding when it comes to backstrafing. Um, a lot of people consider backstrafing to be just reversing the whole time and getting away from the ship, but there's actually two ways of looking at backstrafing. Um, if you think of back, backstrafing as just getting away from the target, there's the other direction, which is strafing up and left or right, which is tricording. Mm -hmm. um, what ends up happening is when you're engaged in mid-range combat, if we talk about someone like uh, A1 who he does what's called, um, 
f fighting in the funnel, which is basically using corkscrews. It's using positional advantage by changing directions of these corkscrews. Um, he's a mid-range fighter. And even though he doesn't backstrafe or he doesn't acknowledge backstrafing, what he does do a lot is he upstrafes and tricords. And that creates distance. It's not necessarily the same as just holding uh, reverse throttle, but it's still a way to control that distance. I don't think that's going to change much. But what is going to change is people who know how to turn their ship nose in a direction that cuts the pip or neutralizes the pip and allows them to use their much stronger rear thrust to push closer to the opponent. This is where we're going to see a lot of change in, in combat where things like knife fighting is going to become more prevalent. And I'm sure Virgil is well aware of knife fighting. He's, I know Shadow Moses is some, one of their primary focuses. I know a lot of guys in there like Raiden do that a lot. Um, and, you know, again, that's all Liberty Reapers does. They knife fight. And it, it's something we, we want to focus on and we want to get better at. Because when you're forced to close range combat, if you don't understand pre-nosing and you don't understand how to use your vector and change your vector direction, you're going to struggle in PvP. Yeah, yeah. A lot of the, like, winners has got a point, right? Like, a lot of the game design, it, it exists in there already, you know, pre-300. Um, and then the game falls apart the second you start going over those speeds. Like, once you go over SCM, or kind of a bit deeper than going over SCM, then we're all just ice skating. But, yeah, like, the game exists. Uh, I, don't, I think you're, I think win is right. Absolutely. I like the idea that they're going to punish retreating, but also, like, you know, trapping and playing offensively, too, which is essentially, like, you know, using momentum, going, riding backwards with that momentum, and then also being offensive so that... You know, they're, they're flying right where you want them to, and you've got no consequence besides reversing into an asteroid. How does decoupled um, play into all this, do we think? It's kind of the unknown I, right now. You know, That's I have a, a big topic. question on decoupled. <laughs> Just, I'm curious, if the devs ever watch this, please freaking answer this. If we decouple and we boost and let go of boost, will we keep our maximum speed, or are we going to get slowed down to whatever our SEM speed is? Because that would change a lot when it comes to combat. Yeah. I think my guess would be we're getting slowed down. Yeah, my guess is too. I'm subtle, hoping not, but that's my guess as well. The uh, that's the that's the one like major question I think would have been answered on uh, SCL if they were there this week. Wait, uh, can can I can I ask Winders now? If you you're saying your hope it's not right, I'm hope it's not what. Uh, you're saying your hope it's not get, our speed is not going to get decreased. Yes. But then the whole point of moving, like putting the speeds down, is ruined. Yeah, but let's we're still not going above probably 500, which is still decent. No, that, that, still that's you're right? not going about like 500. People will be going maximum they can. No, no, no. I'm not mode. saying I'm not saying we should be able to hit like ridiculous amounts. We know not that QCM. The, in yeah, SCM we know. With boost. Yeah, we're not saying QCM. We're saying in in SCM mode, there's still another cap. There's two caps. There's a boost cap and there's an SCM. Yeah, there's cap. a boost cap and there's an SCM cap. Yeah, then, you shouldn't. Yeah, you shouldn't so you're decoupled. Cap. If you're decoupled, you're stuck at the normal cap, and then you boost the couple, you go up to the new boost cap. Yeah, and, exactly. and you don't go down. That means like yeah. the decoupled will be the only valid way to fight. Like. If you're uncoupled, you're in a constant disadvantage. Correct, it's but that's how it like is right already. now, too. If yeah. I know a lot of people are very like, oh, pro-couple, pro-couple this. Um, no, couple sucks. And the reason for it is yep. because your ship is being forced to slow down, so it's easier to shoot you, and it's harder to change directions. And but they, again, they also create, said... it will make the gap even bigger. They also yeah, said, which I, um... think, I think it's a good thing because we want a high skill ceiling for PvP, right? That's what makes PvP fun in the long run. Because if you have something like Elite Dangerous where you play for a week and you're pretty goddamn good already, that, that's it. The game gets boring. I mean, why not remove then coupled mode overall? Well, coupled mode is a good way to learn the ship, it's right? It's training wheels, to, brother. Yeah, it's, it's training wheels. And it's a good way to fly in a different style. Um, like, you don't always have to have decoupled. You may not want it for certain things that you're doing, like mining. I would rather be coupled for mining. Um, there's been there's, times in the past where it was like really good to like the couple would be decoupled because you were so much tighter like you could orbit people yeah. tighter and stuff like that you weren't as and loose. i think that also came down to how people used to fight like if we go back to 314 where it was more like quake wars like people were so fast 
and you can mm -hmm. change directions so quickly that Don't it became about it. like who would land shots and then readjust and land shots again. Yep. Yeah. I'm still not buying for now. Again, that is my complete opinion. I'm not saying I'm right here, but I think it will, it will just move the speed ceiling higher and nothing like, yeah, I don't, and that's it. Yeah. I, I'm well, still again, not buying again, it, but again, that's me. That's me. Again, the, the speed thing is we're, we're looking at it like what we're used to now where we're seeing people go to 1,200 and we can't catch them. The thing is, if you know how to pip, neutralize and you know how to read players you can catch them at these ridiculous speeds just look at carthu wall pilots you're not yeah, getting sure. away from a carthu like it's not yeah, happening. for sure i and understand I think, that and i think if we have 500 ms i think as long as desync is not an issue at 500 ms or lower <laughs> then it shouldn't matter because the yeah, issue right now is not. we get to 1200 and your shots never fucking land that's the issue yeah but wait wait are you are you it's not the only issue combat though, right? at 500 is that what you're getting at S say again what are you are you pushing for decoupled to be able to stretch past the SCM in combat? Is that what you're um, saying? Not necessarily. I mean, I, either way it goes, it doesn't matter, right? Because like I said, I don't think top speed is relevant. Um, what matters is acceleration. The top well, speed also, is relevant to the yeah. point if, in one point because there are two fa ma major factors. The human reaction to change mm -hmm. the vector like towards his opponent change, right? And then the amount of time the opponent has the advantage before they reach the top speed. And yeah. that is and, and that is two major factors. So the bigger you create the gap where an opponent can accelerate from you, the more uh, distance gap this creates in an overall fight. I, I'm putting yeah. it very simply. Obviously, there are much more. Yeah, no, like, it's, it's much more complicated, but you exactly know what I mean. So yeah. giving this like uh, increasing that ceiling to 500 without bleeding out to SCM will again lead to the gap between <laughs> the ships, right? It so, defeats the purpose of all of this. Yeah, it kind of, yes. it just, I feel that it defeats the purpose. Again, I'm not a best pilot ever. I'm a very average. I'm like, there is Avenger one and I'm personally average one, right? <laughs> so, uh, like, like I, I'm very average. I can I can beat majority of PU players, but in in, in like in um, arena commander, unless I train for like the next three months, I, I'm dog shit. But it it doesn't like kill the understanding of how it works in me in my brain. So mm -hmm. I feel like giving that 500 in the couple will just defeat the purpose of why it's done. It's just my personal so, opinion. So it depends, right? We we have to test this to really fully understand its implications. But let's say we are down to 500. 500 is still very easy to vector change on with the current model. Like if you were to limit yourself to 500 and fight at 500, it's very easy. Um, it comes down to like knowing, it, it comes down to what ship you fly, right? Because light fighters will be the be all end all for catching players. Even if you're capped, let's say 500 on a Gladius and then you're 480 on an arrow, the arrow's never getting away. Like 500 is still enough range to apply damage to a ship. And if you're knife fighting, which is usually within 300 meters, uh, and they all of a sudden go 500 meters in another direction, and you catch it when he's 200 in front of you, he's still within 800, 900 meters, which is applicable for, for damage sakes. So 500 is still something that we can manage. Um, and I'm guessing again because we don't know if decoupled will slow down. But why do you want it? Why do you want 500? Like, like get to your I, agenda. I, I don't. Like you I want, don't you want you want interception can, and like. Decoupled no, it can go any way. Right? I don't, I don't care if scale. it's 500 or not. But the thing is, if we have 500, it allows these players that have more skill uh, than the other skill players. Skill at what, though? A skill, skill at, like, drifting? At controlling, like, this at is... controlling direction and speed. Yeah, but yeah, but you can do that at 250. Can yeah, you can this? do it at 250, right? But like, like, again, That's just, like, you're just talking about controlling, I'll, I'll get you like, decoupled yeah. drift. Let me, let me, let me give you uh, an example. Let's say the speed is 300, right? Because that's current... Let, 250, 280, whatever, somewhere around there. Isn't it all if relative? If I were to change direction, if I were to change direction on you and I can accelerate from zero to 280 in two seconds, you're not going to react to that in time and you're never going to catch me because now I have a gap between 200 meters. And then what I do is I keep changing that vector so that I keep increasing that gap little by little because you cannot react to that acceleration change as quickly as I can input it. I would say we've done... Um quite a few practices um, limiting 
uh, our maximum speed right now in the current patch, right? Of course, we cannot artificially create the state where the boost increases. Um, yeah, that, that, that's what I wanted to talk yeah, about. Yeah, that's the top part. Like, we cannot do that, right? right? Obviously, there is no, unless we do it manually, but it's impossible. Yeah. Um, so I would say there is a huge difference between limiting yourself to 300 and 500. That's why I'm like making my argument because I, mm -hmm. I've seen it. Like there is a huge difference. And I'm talking yeah, about definitely... like pilots who know how to merge correctly, right? So again, like the, the higher you go with the speeds, the more you get um, uh, this effect of you shooting a pixel. You th this this like combat when you see your opponent up close goes away and away the more you increase the speed limit, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I feel, and, and there is another thing we have to remember. Um, there is the whole logic in this um, in this new system that boosting will get you above. The yeah, it's after right? yeah. It's like it's like I, I mean, obviously, this is nothing to do with IRL physics. We're not discussing that right now. We're we're discussing completely gameplay, right? So, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> the whole point of managing the resources then goes away. To keep yourself above a CM, you have to have the boost. That means you have to have the capacitor for it. That means like the whole capacitor thing, right? So, yeah. if if you if you let the decoupled um, ship infinitely go on the maximum uh, speed, again, that kills the purpose of using your boost to go on that speed. You only have to use it to accelerate, right? So if you're trying to disengage now, all you have to do is go decoupled and like, and um, decoupled and okay. uh, vector, and then you let can me, keep that speed, right? Instead of wasting you, your boost. I, I agree with you. Let me, let me, Two things. I agree. Look, I, I think that would be the better outcome, but let's worst case scenario, they let decoupled max out. But let's put another outlook into this. Let's say you're trying to shoot me and you're going powers to weapons and I'm power to thrust the whole time. You will yeah. never catch me because I am not trying to engage. And every time you're trying to recharge your weapons, I have more boost than you. Oh, yeah, that, that, that's true. You'll that's run fine. Out. That's fine. But so that's that, decisions. That happens, that happens on both speeds it happens with SEM being locked and it happens with it being unlocked i'm not saying we we should have unlocked or i'm not saying we should have locked i'm saying here are the possibilities and how do, how does it affect the gameplay i think if they unlock it we're okay still uh but personally i think locked would be the better option okay. if i can uh Xperia was trying to jump in, so I don't, I don't know. Oh no no yeah, that was just it was about the, the top speed thing. Okay. When, sure. when, yeah, it was it was when you when you boost, you you, you can go in forwards. Yeah. In a higher speed, but but that's less. like the the point of this, right? Like the the point of them turning boost into afterburner, meaning like right now you boost, you still it just means you get to the ceiling quicker, but it doesn't lift the ceiling. With boost mm -hmm. now you lift the ceiling, which adds yeah. like skill to chasing and retreating. But let's not kid ourselves. Like the reason we're in this mess is because people keep retreating, and yeah, it's just a bit alarming that we we're discussing, I think, you know, wanting to creep back towards in that direction. Like that's the fucking mess we're in right now, brother. Yeah, I think another issue is not not only the speed, but like it's because if if you when you fly with like you know people who know how to get close to you, like let's take Aiko for example. He's really good at chasing people down. Um, you know, even if he catches them, even if he's able to stay on them at 1,200 meters, he just cannot apply the damage. And that's where the problem is. Because you can chase someone and you get punished for it because when we start exceeding these speeds, it doesn't matter how good you are, you just can't apply damage. So they have a safe meter where they can just regain their boost and regain their shields and then boost again in another direction. Why can't you apply damage for somebody who doesn't uh, really so know? So what's going, what's going on right now in, in Star Citizen, when you go over a certain speed, I don't know what speed it is, I haven't done the exact testing, let's say maybe 600, but you'll start to notice your shots will land because you'll see hit indicators, mm -hmm. like you'll see the, the repeater sparks, Sure. but there won't actually be application of damage. You'll see the the... the Thing will blip and the ship will keep going and nothing the ship will not take any damage the shield will recharge and it just ignores all your fire mm. okay yeah we also have to understand one more thing like a really critical and crucial thing we cannot measure um the pvp experience by 
putting an example of like top pilots in the verse. Yeah. They have to have an ability to utilize their skill, obviously, to get victorious. But we cannot think like about the game by comparing like top like 50 pilots okay no, or I whatever agree. i'm not trying top, to top 10 to pilots because like these... a, a, an ability of like someone from the top league to merge and like all that 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 is really not the case that means like no one <laughs> no one in the lower skill cap will be able to like do shit <laughs> you know what i mean yeah, yeah but, but i, I think, think see like... i think this is gonna happen at slow speeds too um I don't because think again you're... of the acceleration yeah but <laughs> like you gotta realize too though right like What's the okay size three? You probably know the number winner. I don't have it off by heart, but what's the range on a size three like laser repeater? One point two. Like I don't think you're gonna be kiting people at one point two in SCM. I think the entire point of the, them developing this is if you're choosing the go combat, you're in fucking combat. You're not gonna be kiting like these. You're not gonna get away from these weapons. You know. Mm -hmm. e even if you say you boost away and like you want to kite and re-engage and stuff i think that the distance of these weapons and how far they can shoot isn't changing but the ships I are agree. which means the the weapons are now f like you know shooting at further ranges um than previously because you could get away from them and stuff like that so i don't think there's gonna be this disengage re-engage meta i think it's if you chose to to fight, then someone dies. Like I don't think it's gonna get prolonged. I think, I think these fights are gonna I think people that think that there's gonna be like, you know, these merges, you know, multiple merges in a fight and stuff, I think unless they retune weapons, I can't see that happening. I think it's gonna be one person dies. I think it's still going to happen, but it's going to happen with people that know how to fight. So for example, um the way to disengage if we, we have an analogy, let's say boxing, we have Muhammad Ali uh, versus Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson wants to get in close, he wants to bob and weave close, and he wants to hit you. Where Ali wants to kind of get away and hit from a little bit further out, get some space, get some control. Uh, the issue with Star Citizen, how this correlates, is let's say we're a knife fighter, right? So I'm going to push in close, I'm going to shoot, and then I want to breathe. So what I'm going to do to breathe is I'm going to hug him really close and stick on him in an orbit so that he can't put his lasers on me when I don't want him to. Now, the thing is, when you have two knife fighters and you're fighting for this positional advantage and you're both in tight and you're trying to get around the target, what one of the ships can do is boost in the other direction extremely fast. And because of the acceleration and the, the reaction time that we need to process it, he'll be able to gain that 1.2K advantage and create distance and get out of the fight. But again, yeah, this is and something I, we uh, need to have to really know. Like, it's yeah, impossible. It's, we still need yeah, these things and, and, in our yeah, hands. You're not, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it, that's it, the reality look, of it, too. Yeah. Let's, we let's can take, all think we know it's going to show up. But I, I see what your point. I, I would just debate that I don't think you can get that gap. I don't. Let's, let's my talk, gut says I don't just, think just you can. Just a quick thing, just maybe. to kind of give something that, you know, statistically we can put our hands on. Uh, let's say we can boost, right? And we hit, I think, 350 is like max speed right now. Um, 350, let's say you can achieve that in two seconds. That means you need four seconds to get that 1.2K distance. And I think that's doable. I think four seconds is enough time. Yeah, but like it's also four seconds is also an incredibly easy amount of time to react to someone trying to leave. If you can like, see it, because again, we're talking about a knife fighter who's hugging you and you can't position and you're trying to fight for position. So maybe you're facing and you're orbiting in a different direction. And what he's actually trying to do is create distance. So he's yeah, going to align know, with dude. his I vector think, and push. Yeah, but I don't think like they're going to be behind you and you're not going to rotate to see them leaving, you know, you're gonna, in you're a gonna smaller rotate. than a four second window. You're going to be fighting yeah. for rotation, right? That's what we do. We, we get yeah, it. I, I know, you know, but like they're all, I know, I, I get that, but you're not four seconds of a turn away, you know? Uh, yeah. No, I you're not, know. you're think... not four seconds of a turn away, but you're, you have to, it, you need to process it and you need to react to his vector. It's that, four that's seconds where for the, the four whole seconds thing. are applicable. So you, four. if you, if you weren't looking, there's the he's time saying, that like, he's essentially leaving. Essentially, he's saying that you should be able to trick someone in four seconds, and I just, I, it's, four, it's four seconds a lot. It, of time. it depends like, on the players. Again, this is the skill gap thing, right? I like, mean, you probably could trick me. Yeah, to a newer player, you're going to be able to do it. To a harder, more skilled veteran like Aiko, uh, for example, um, I'm not going to be able to do that. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. Bye -bye. Yeah.
I think this is this one thing I think is a uh, way more of we need it in our I hands. I mean, like no one, no one knows, right? Very little yeah, about it's, it. It's you, you know, and that's the reality of this too, right? Is like what a flight model looks like in the first month. Give it three months, six months to bake, and like people have found the cheese, people have found like the jank in it. Like yeah. you're not gonna know what this is like. Like I was praising the last flight model. This one, I remember. Right here. I remember. Like. Yeah, and to be fair, Wait, we're here. Okay, a lot of it was the capacitors, but um, you know, and things like desync came into the equation, all that jazz. But like, yeah, you know, and then three months of it, and you've everyone's figured out, you know, how to do it dirty, and then it gets mm -hmm. horrible, you know. Yeah. So <laughs> it's not it, it. It we're not gonna know. We can theorize all day about what we think is gonna happen, and you know, I'm not right. Neither's winner. We're we're gonna see it yeah. when it happens, but. Um, yeah, like it, the the big one is though is that you know it's gonna need some time to settle, like a lot of time. Every every time they make these changes, you know it's great for a couple of weeks or it's miserable for a couple of weeks, and then it evolves into something else three six months down the track. Yeah, and what yeah, is this? Because this is a much bigger change than they're usually making. So, yeah. I think I think what I want to do is I I want to kind of put a put an end to the show. We've been going for about uh, two and a half hours no. now. <laughs> no, we can't. No, we well, haven't I... even talked about racing, Mike. Fuck, we... fuck. fuck that. What right now. Let's Let's get listen, on. That. listen, fuck that. listen. I'm, that I'm, was, you heard that was... races. I love racing, but I think that that's uh -huh. a separate thing because I think that they con con unconveniently left it out of the the conversation on that show, and that was sort of disappointing. So I think. That I want. It's not that I don't like racing or anything. I obviously love it. Ever anybody who's been here for a long time knows that I loved racing. But I think that there's something that needs that it needs a, a dedicated conversation from them to understand what they even want to do with racers more than the one sentence they gave it at, at Citizen Con. So um, that's why I didn't message Black Maze to bring him on on the show or anything like that uh, or anybody from his group because. I felt that we need to know a lot more before we can even converse but, but about it. Well, be, like, it'd be pure speculation. Yeah, one 100%. good thing, quickly on the racing, one good thing about this, I think, is that, like, I don't know if any of you have had any experiences trying the race, um, but if you go into the racetracks right now and you haven't rehearsed it, I'm talking about the race mode in AC, if you haven't rehearsed the race, you're going to fucking die. <laughs> like, yeah, it's yeah. pure for hours. Racing, racing is memorization. Because it's so yeah. bad, right? Like, and that, but that's like, that's, you know, not discredit to the map. The map's great. It's just like the, the game design of flight right now is so bad. So now I think with these speed changes, you know, doing that racetrack at, at an actual reasonable speed and boost is going to be matter so, much, so more fun. much. Yeah. I like think it it's a good to. thing for the races. And I think that, I think that they might not see that and you know is they just think oh we're losing speed that is bad for races but I it think depends, it's like though, no, you're if you gaining can, if you can terrain, race in quantum gaining, mode uh, it's the same I would yeah. say yeah. this I would say this about the racing uh, listen um I failed like you're gaining about, intricate yeah. race we, tracks we still, and stuff. Sorry, we still can boost over SCM there's going to be a lot of boost management right now in racing because you don't go like a thousand on a racetrack anyway but if you can get with boosting to like 400 500 that's literally enough for those race they tracks. said it's just a hundred above right like a hundred not, not specifically they didn't say no again. they didn't say that like they didn't say exactly a okay. hundred yeah they didn't so... really show it it's hard to say i'm gonna guess yeah, it's okay. maybe like 150 yeah. But yeah. They didn't show, so so it, it might be enough for uh, racing to be interesting. But it's we'll not an infinite ceiling, right? It's not. You just it's not. No. I hope no, not. Yeah. God, I hope no. not. Um, I mean, we are probably done with the foreplay on this discussion. We can can we start the real talk now? What's the real oh, talk? Fuck. Back to piracy, <laughs> boys. Shit. <laughs> no, I was. I wanted to actually talk about the last thing. You 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 kind of touched on that um, before, but. Like, I, I don't think we, we talked about that enough. <laughs> the actual SCM speeds and uh, something Jonathan was um, talking about. Yeah, before right? you keep going, John, can you just point out where people could find them? They were all trying to look for them again. It's on the ship yeah, sale page of each ship? Yeah, yeah, go to the pledge store and where, they, where you list all the ships and you can pick and click a ship. Uh, click on the ship that you want and then go to um, technical or 
uh, specifications, and then in there the SEM speeds are being updated. You can test it now. If Is you're that going... confirmed? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. If you go in, okay. in, in Space 2, you'll notice all the ships are different. Like, the Gladius is not 280 right now. It's nowhere near that. Um, okay. But, yeah. I just checked, and I didn't see any that have changed, except for specifically the Aopo and Nox. Now has no, a crazy no, no, no. high Wait, where are you checking? <laughs> oh, you're looking at the, the MS speeds, right, for the ships? Yeah, the ship matrix. No, yeah, no, they no. all changed. Is it the ship matrix? No, let me look it up. It's hard to rely on that info, to be honest, right now. Yeah, look, I wouldn't, I wouldn't rely on any of this, right? Because we don't really have this concrete yet, yeah. and they could change it last minute. We don't really know. But we have an idea of what they want to do. They, they want light fighters to be the fastest thing. Interceptors are going to be right up there, and then every, every other thing is going to be slower. That's their thing. And the Sabre is going to be the next generation fighter, everyone. <laughs> yeah, Sabre's going to yeah, be good. Yeah, is it going to be good again? <laughs> Is it going to be good? Yeah, dude, that's, that's yes! the most advanced fighter there ever is. Yes! It's not a flying pancake or anything. Finally! Uh, I had a standpoint <laughs> on all of this. I feel from the, bits from the bits of the information we get from the devs here and there, like somewhere in discords and whatsoever, I feel they're again going into the um, rabbit hole of manually creating um, SCM speeds for the ships, for a lot of ships, right? Without having an underlying logic to it. That's my take on it. I feel that the SCM speed and obviously um, boost speed should be the direct um, result of the equation that will take into account the initial acceleration of the ship. That is my take on it. And I think what they're doing right now is not entirely correct. So the faster the ship can accelerate, at least uh, like make it simple, make it the forward direction for now. I mean, there, there could be more complicated formulas, but let's make it simple. The faster acceleration of the ship is in the forward direction, the better maximum speed it should have. And uh, everything should play out of that. Because I feel that they're going into this manual creation of uh, different accelerations versus different uh, maximum speeds, which makes no sense. Because obviously, by, by the basic logic, the ship that can um, accelerate better in space will be faster. And the maximum speed is just there to make the gameplay, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I think maximum speed should represent it. And they, if they feel... Uh, whatever ship is um, uh, not fast enough, they should just tweak its accelerations. It, it's just my personal feeling. And then everything will kind of go into the um, into that logic. So I, I feel there should be more logic, less manual control of the values. I don't know. Um, and, and also, like, talking about, like, the speeds, I, I think the difference that... The, the difference in speeds we hear from the devs is a bit too small, especially between the small ships and the big ships. It's like uh, 25 to 50 um, meters per second difference. Um, I think there, there's going to be a bit of a struggle, especially in, in the combat scenarios of uh, big yeah. multi-crew ships. So you have to understand, if, if um, that's also an argument against uh, decoupled maximum speed forever, because that's going to give bigger ships a total advantage. Um, okay. so, so imagine the scenario, uh, a hammerhead or a carrick, whatever, a big ship that is like only 25 meters per second or 30 meters per second slower than a fighter, going maximum SCM speed in one vector, in one direction, right? So... This creates a scenario where smaller fighters have to fight those 25 meters per second, right? Um, being completely naked to the gunfire, not being able to maneuver. And it's, it's going to be a weird game where you fight to go around the ship. You struggle to go around the big ship, right? In one direction where it's going, but then you're completely free to uh, navigate around it going, like if you circle it, right? You're completely free to navigate around it going to, to it backward. And then again, you struggle going 
around it into the vector it's going. I, I think the difference in speed should be more. It's just my take on it. And um, I don't know if anything that I've just said makes any sense, but no, I, I want you. to hear other people about uh, about this topic. Did it uh, make sense? I think the speeds. I think the speeds will be more. Um, I don't think it will be twenty five. I think twenty five will be for light fighters. They'll be probably close to each other. But I think if we look at uh, something like, uh, see, it's not even. They don't even have a list speed yet for the hammerhead, so we don't know. But the prospectors listed is uh, two hundred. Uh, that's almost a hundred oh uh, speed fucked. difference between the prospector and the gladius. So I think light fighters and what they're trying to do is light uh -oh. fighters will dictate where the fight happens, and things like hammerhead will be more useful for defensive positioning. I hope you're right because from the different sources I've heard, the 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 speed difference is less than 100 meters per second, and that makes me worry, really yeah, I worry. Think, I think that's because they were talking about interceptors and and light fighters. Because I think it would be ridiculous if they make a, a warden or a hurricane as fast as light fighters. Because then light fighters will, are just they're they're scrapped. Like there will be no reason to have a light fighter ever. Yeah. Yeah, and God, CIG always balances so far in one direction and never really. They always like overcompensate too, so hopefully not. Overcompensating for distortion? Yeah. No way. No way. <laughs> but all right, I think um, two and a half hours is a uh, sufficient length for for a podcast. I think nah, if we go fuck any, that. keep going. And, and nah, nah. I think if we go any longer, <laughs> Letty's gonna fall asleep on on stream over here because we stopped talking about piracy. But the free Letty, <laughs> free Letty, <laughs> yeah, fucking Letty, dude. But I want to real quick go around the table. Your your after seeing everything at Citizen Con, how do you feel about the future of ship versus ship PvP piracy player versus player? Um, how we're gonna engage, attack, defend? How do you feel about it? Give your quick um, synopsis, uh, Letty. I'll let you go first. Um, I'm excited for it. Really, like I'm really excited for these changes uh, just for PvP combat in general because mm -hmm. I'm sick of fucking watching people just when I'm trying to fight them just fly away to recharge their shields. Yep. I want to be able to like just get in there and if they want to fight, then you know I'm going to give them a fight and not watch them run away. Hell yeah. So I'm looking forward to it. Yep. Winters? I think it's great. Um Again, we have so little really to go off here, so a lot of it is like what-if scenarios, right? But I think the overall uh, speed nuking, um, you know, bringing speeds down, if that's what they need to do to fix this freaking desync issue, then let's do it, because I think that's the main killer of PvP right now. Okay. Virgil? Man, it's going to feel like finally playing the game again. You know, like, it's... It's not good enough for the guys that are developing this. It's not good enough that we've been living with this for this many years, you know? Like, we all can't fly and shoot at each other's spaceships because of this shit. So I'm glad it's coming. It feels like they've got an answer for each of the problems that are important. Um, looks good on paper. We're going to see where it comes when it lands. But um, it looks promising, and we need it. And we need it now, boys. We don't need it another year from now. Two years, we baby. need it to start playing your fucking game. So please, as soon as possible. But it looks promising. All right. And I won't forget about you two now, Xperia. Sorry for the beginning. Um, <laughs> Again. Yeah, I mean, bring it on. It looks, it looks great. Uh, I'm excited to hear more about how these systems will play into piracy, specifically for me. Um, but in general, for PvP between fighters and stuff, sounds great. And I'm especially interested um, and excited for larger ships because i think they're going to be massively improved with the, the speed changes in regards to tariffs so yeah i'm excited for it nice and cutlet well i'm quite excited about it there's a lot hey. of questions to it and uh, those questions that i've just uh, asked about the difference of speeds but it will definitely put the game it will probably put the game in a much better spot in terms of like combat overall um, I really want to see, obviously, how the piracy will play out on this. Um, I, I'm really waiting for both those changes and 318. I'll, I'll be back in 318 like crazy. Um, I don't know what's going to happen um, overall with the game, um, in t in, in, with the piracy in 318, with all the distortions not pro properly working, but I hope at least like ships will blow up and like leave proper cargo. And I hope these like speed changes will be ASAP, as Virgil said. Like we don't need them in in a year. We will literally need 
need them now and they have to be tested uh, b battle hardened and all that like cannot wait positive very positive yeah nice i i i have to say i agree as well it's 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 probably going to take a, a huge learning curve for someone like me um but i'm excited to finally take on the task because it, it feels like it, it's going to be something that's worth it like you know we jokingly brought up the uh, fight or flight tournament from last year but how nice would it be for pvp content to actually be engaging content to watch on the internet because i i'm i'm sorry to all the people who do it on on twitch for sure but it, it's not very engaging uh at the moment because like virgil said earlier there's not a conclusion to that stuff and i think what we're going to start seeing post 318 is your your pvpers on twitch your pvpers on youtube start to to really grow because there's going to be or just get diminished because they're going to be swarmed by, yeah, by or, or blobs or whatever we <laughs> will yeah we might see we moves. might see that too it, the the biggest might pvpers might, might be might test never come back to streaming yeah so i <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, we're, I I we're, fuck, right we're now, fucked actually. chat we're fucked <laughs> I always personally well, found. Coming for all of us. <laughs> right. Oh, no. I was. I always, I, always pers blow the sun. I always personally found uh, PvP content to watch for Star Citizen to not be very engaging because it was uh, so much cat and mouse and 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 not enough uh, conclusion. So hopefully that changes and because that there's nothing more I want to watch than that type of content, like competitions, tournaments. Uh, just general fighting over a jump town, things like that. And and I think that this could really help with that because people will be more closer together, on screen together, all those things. So um, I want to thank everyone for coming on the show and and uh, and being here to discuss these things and, and to agree and to disagree and, and to be somewhat civil. We had our moments today, but the uh i appreciate everything and and i appreciate you guys so much so i just want to say thank you for that and i and thank you for for uh educating me i i feel like i understand things a lot more now than i did uh a couple hours ago so thank you guys i hope the chat Pleasure. got the same experience so. thanks for having us mike yeah, yeah, yeah. it was an this honor is, this was fun it was yes fun. so thank you I'll, for getting me in last moment yes i apologize um but i also knew that uh Poor, poor Winters wouldn't get to say anything if I let you come in earlier. <laughs> oh no, it's fun, it's fun. <laughs> no, don't worry. I'm, Honestly, I usually like hearing everybody's play. opinions. Yeah, <laughs> I hope totally that was PvP my host there. skills. Yep, those, those were my host PvP skills. So, guys, uh, you're free to go. I'll say goodbye to to chat and everything, and and do the outro for YouTube. But again, thank you so much. I really appreciate it, and uh, especially for for you guys in Aussie land. I know it's late, so thank you so much. Yeah, once again, pleasure being here, guys. Catch y'all yep. later. Yep, hopefully again Enjoy. soon, Winters. Be good, man. So, See you guys. That was Answer the Call, guys. And um, I, I do want to do a quick outro uh, for the people who do make it this far because it, it is a long one. Uh, the last Answer the Call episode was saying I needed a break, and that was the title and a lot of like positive comments there uh, about that in particular. But... I wanted to take a break from making bad content. <laughs> like that's that's basically what I got to. And and I, I don't think people quite got to that point in the conversation of I didn't want to pull something out of midair and, and, and make bad content when there was a good discussion to have with people who understand what they're talking about, like these guys right here. That's the type of content that I want to continue to make. And if I don't have that, I don't want to feel the obligation to continue making shows that I feel are not good. So I felt this was a really good opportunity and, and I hope you guys enjoyed the show and I hope you feel the way that I, that I felt about it. I thought it was really great. So thank you everybody. Um, I appreciate it. And, and make sure you leave a like comment down below. If you're watching this on YouTube, for those of you guys that are watching on Twitch, if you didn't catch the whole thing, I'll be putting it up on YouTube as soon as I possibly can. I'll probably actually have to turn the stream off to do it uh, right now. Cause I have a hockey game and I have to leave in an hour. So thanks again for watching and uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys next time. Bye everyone.